will have repercussions across the Middle East. Fox's Trey Yinkst in Tel Aviv says the top general believed to have been targeted, Mohammed Azahedi, plays a key role in getting weapon shipments from Iran to Syria, Iraq, and Lebanon. This is an individual who is a top brigadier general in the Iranian military echelon. He is responsible for supplying these Iran-backed Iraqi and Syrian Shia militias with the rockets and weaponry that they are using to target American forces in the Middle East and the same weaponry that is being used by Iran-backed Hezbollah to target Israeli forces in the northern part of this country. The Iranian ambassador is quoted as saying the response will be harsh. A reporter just asking White House spokeswoman Karine Jean-Pierre if the U.S. knew about a strike in advance. So, look, I'm aware of the reports. Our team is looking into it, so I'm not going to get ahead of, of anything just yet. The U.S. and Israeli officials have a previously scheduled virtual meeting today to discuss concerns about Israel's plans to send forces into the Gaza city of Rafah. Jean-Pierre just confirming President Biden will travel to Baltimore Friday to visit the collapsed Key Bridge and meet with state and local officials. One of the two suspects in the recent traffic stop killing of a New York City police officer is due in court just over an hour from now. Lindy Jones already held without bail. Lindy Jones is facing weapons charges. He's been arrested over a dozen times. Police say Jones illegally parked his car at a bus stop in Far Rockaway, Queens, when his passenger shot and killed Officer Diller. Fox's Nate Foy, the accused shooter, Guy Rivera, faces murder charges and remains hospitalized. America is listening to to Fox News. Waiting on a tax return? Hopefully it ends up in your hands. Fraudulent tax returns due to identity theft increased by 30% in 2023. If you're in a bind this tax season, LifeLock can help. Our U.S.-based restoration specialists are experts dedicated to helping solve your identity theft issues. And all LifeLock plans are backed by the Million Dollar Protection Package. So we'll reimburse you up to the limits of your plan if you lose money due to identity theft. Help protect your information this tax season with LifeLock. Save up to 25% your first year with promo code NEWS at LifeLock.com. Life insurance. Why are you putting it off? Can't afford it? Too much hassle? Think you don't need it? There's lots of excuses for putting off life insurance. But if you weren't there, who would pay the mortgage and other bills? With Ethos, you could be covered in 10 minutes and boom, family protected. Ethos, fast and easy online term life insurance. Up to $2 million in coverage with no medical exam. Some policies as low as a dollar a day. Answer a few health questions and get your free quote at getethos.com. That's getethos.com. Air Comfort Service, heating, cooling, and insulation, weather. It's a springtime atmosphere this afternoon with a changeable sky, and we're watching for scattered showers and thunderstorms, 75 for the high. Tonight, periods of rain and storms. Some of them could be on the strong side, especially during the evening before sunset. Windy in 48. Tuesday, a couple of showers are out in the morning. Otherwise, mostly cloudy, windy, 55 on Tuesday, but temperatures drop into the 40s on Tuesday afternoon. This is 97.1 FM Talk. Chief Meteorologist Dave Murray. Mike Carter here of Carter Law Offices. You know, as an attorney, I make my way across the great state of Missouri on a pretty regular basis. And from the rivers to the lakes and the Ozark Mountains, it's really just a pleasure to travel across the great state of Missouri. And, you know, not to mention, we have the best sports team and the best cities and the friendliest small towns in America, it seems like. And Carter Law Offices wants to make sure Missouri's story gets out far and wide about our excellent business climate, our exceptional workforce. You'll hear more from me soon, Mike Carter. Visit MikeCarter.com to see Mike's interviews with all of Missouri's elected leaders. Mike Carter here of Carter Law Offices. You know, as an attorney, I make my way across the great state of Missouri on a pretty regular basis. And from the rivers to the lakes and the Ozark Mountains and the richest farmland around, it's really just a pleasure to travel across the great state of Missouri. And, you know, not to mention, we have the best sports team and the best cities and the friendliest small towns in America, it seems like. And Carter Law Offices wants to make sure Missouri's story gets out far and wide about our excellent business climate, our exceptional workforce. You'll hear more from me soon, Mike Carter. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. Hey, homeowners, it's time to transform your house into a masterpiece with Lakeside Renovation and Design, your James Hardy siding experts. Picture this, durable, weather-resistant siding that doesn't just protect, but elevates your home's value and curb appeal. James Hardy, the gold standard in siding, installed by the pros at Lakeside. Say goodbye to maintenance headaches and hello to a home that stands the test of time. Ready for a siding upgrade? Lakeside Renovation and Design is your go-to. Visit our showroom or call today. Unleash the potential of your home with James Hardy Siding. Don't let a cold, sinus infection, or allergies ruin your day. Breathe easier, sleep better, and feel healthier with Navage. Visit Navage.com, Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, or a store near you. 
The Annie Fry Show YouTube live chat poll of the day is sponsored by Ruler Foods. Low prices, no coupons. Ruler Foods. That is exactly what I needed to hear. Thank God someone here knows what they're talking about. That's us. That's right. Gotta love this American ride. All right, you need to take the time and get the full picture. Come on, come on. I love the ladies. I mean, they rev my engine, but they don't belong in the newsroom. It is Anchor Man, not Anchor Lady. What do you want from me? I'm not a Mary the sweet heart. Goodness sake, kid. Keep your voice down. Your father's listening to the radio. I'm not a Mary the sweet heart. This is the Annie Fry Show. Today is a day that you cannot believe anything you read or anything you hear. With that, I'm Annie Fry. Thanks for joining us today <laughs> on this Monday edition of the Annie Fry Show. I saw somebody post it earlier today that said, don't believe anything you read on the Internet today. Not because it's April 1st, but just because it's on the Internet and it's probably not true anyway. Hey, my name is Mike Elam, sitting in for Annie today, who gets to have a little longer Easter holiday than what we probably thought she was going to have. Uh, Ryan and Brad are here. How are you guys? Great. Yeah. Doing well. I'm a little tired still. <laughs> I thought Friday was a reset for me coming back from Japan. Well, it, it kind of was. It was not entirely because then I went into a weekend where I slept in the middle of the day a lot. And here we are again doing Friday again. You know, I think you're you're in one of those deals where you had an operating system reset and sometimes you have to reset the hard drive more than once mm -hmm. for everything to really get back to normal. Been I'm really there. looking forward to saying some stupid, stupid things today. Well, you'll be in good company because <laughs> I'm sitting in next to you. So that means you've got cover. This is <laughs> That's great because normally Annie's like, she's got it. And then I say stupid things. Today, I'm really looking forward to making fun of you and you can make fun of me. And You know, I'm always excited when I get to fill in on the show because I'm, I'm always curious to hear what I have to say. <laughs> yeah, I, I get I, I know exactly what you mean it's like wow that thought went went through and came out all on its own didn't it I should, probably should have processed that one a little bit more well I'm excited to be here anytime I get the opportunity to sit in on the Annie Fry show it is always fun especially with you two guys it's not often that I get to fill in when you're both here so it's really exciting when you're both here because especially for the fans of the show because they only lost you know, a third. They didn't. They didn't lose more than that. Mm -hmm. Granted, she is a pretty big, big third of the show. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it is yeah. the Annie Fry show after all. So uh, I hope you're having a great April Fool's Day. Have you had anybody do anything today so far that you're like, "Wow, that was an April Fool's deal"? Mm, no, I haven't had anybody do anything directly to me. But I've come across some things online that were kind of funny. And anything? Like, aha! Aha! I see what you did there. Um, now, somebody said that the, the cabinet has decided to invoke the 25th Amendment and, you know, just stuff ah, like that. And I haven't I seen like, any of those. I was like, nope, check the calendar. It's April 1st. Nice try. <laughs> those I, get me, though. Those fake new, news ones for about 20 seconds. I'll go, are you serious? And then I'll realize it's April yeah. 1st. Like, wait, is that real? Oh, no. It's like, you know, like on Easter, if you decide to all of a sudden call it the trans visibility day i'm like no come on that's that's got to be wait a minute in... this is still march right. <laughs> yeah. they're they're a day ahead they haven't actually nope that was that was real some of the stuff lately i've been reading in the news i'm like okay it's like when you play is this a babylon b story or is this a real story game right yeah some of the stuff i've been reading lately and i've been seeing i'm like no that that can't be true like Marjorie Taylor Greene saying that we need to get rid of the Speaker of the House. No, oh, come on. We've been down this road before. You're not really going to do that, are you? You're not really going to file that motion. Well, evidently, she's floated that trial balloon. We only have a majority of one. All it really takes is one more joker saying, hey, not only am I not going to run, I'm going to leave early and I'm going to go home. And if we just have one more of those go, we could easily have Speaker Hakeem Jeffries Ugh. running everything. It's a legit possibility. And when you have a Republican 
who is going, who understands, by the way, that she is the one, right? So she has a lot of power to gum up the works. And we were having an, an interesting conversation before we kind of started this and just talking about the different voices that are out there in the party and what they represent and what you can expect for them once they're, uh, what what you can expect from them after they're elected. And I think sometimes you have to temper that, but you have to understand when somebody says, this is who I am, believe them, right? Take them literal when they say that stuff sometimes, because my experience is if you have somebody who says, I'm a fighter, I'm going to fight for you, and those are the words that they use, very aggressive type language, typically these are people that don't play well with others, and they are not going to be consensus builders, probably not great for executive roles. Put them in legislative roles because they represent a voice that needs to be heard. But if you're relying on them to get stuff done, ah, I would tell you evidence is, It doesn't happen that way. Yeah, it was an interesting conversation because we were just sitting here sort of opining opining on uh, the different factions within conservatism, basically. And the different voices even that you see, not just nationally, but here in Missouri um, and in in Illinois to a lesser extent, in the extent that conservatives actually exist in Illinois. (laughs) Well, (laughs) Illinois actually has it on the other side, though. They have the Mm -hmm. we mirror each other very well in that one is. One is the Democrat side of it, and one is the Republican side of it. But the reason that I even brought that issue up and was just talking with you guys about it is because I do love that voice that stands up and goes, we need to think about things completely differently. Yes. I love that voice, and I am very drawn to that person. On a national scale, that has been Donald Trump. Uh, On a local scale, it kind of plays out differently depending on where you are. Yep. But – the the reason that I even brought it up is because at the same time as I love that person, I also need them to just like record the sale of a house. <laughs> you know, I, I need government to do the things that government is there to do. And sometimes when you have the fighter voice, they don't they don't get in there to sort of make sure that government is running efficiently, right. which is conservative to do. You want to make sure that you're not wasting money and wasting resources, so you want to run it efficiently. At the same time, I want somebody who's going to run it efficiently and get in there and go, I also want to rethink the way we're running this at all. <laughs> like, So it's hard to find that person, though, who can do both of those things simultaneously. Well, stop and think about why that, that fighter person resonates with, like you and, and Americans across there, because for a really long time in the country— that's the forgotten man. It's the it's, it was. It's the people that the people that those types of representatives resonate with are the people that feel like nobody has been paying attention to their needs. They feel like they've been getting hosed ever since these people. Like they're just there to go along to get along, and they don't get along with anybody. And and because they're doing whatever, my personal life is is in shambles because I've got to deal with all these dumb things that these politicians have come up with. Is that's the mindset of the person that votes for. The, yeah. the the fighter candidate, and they want somebody to go in there and smash the gears and rebuild the machine. But then you get to the point where the gears are broken on the ground, and you go, oh, well, this part of this, this process isn't fun. I didn't need you to burn the whole house down. I just wanted my voice to be heard. And I think it started with the Tea Party, right? So the Tea Party started bringing that mentality in there, and it's ebbed and flowed and moved around, and Things have have changed. I think the pandemic did a lot to reset some mindsets on how things are. But part of the thing that frustrates me with the Republican Party is we forget that legislating and voting are a team sport. You can't do it individually. It's not golf, right? This is football, basketball. This is team sports. So he who has the most votes wins. Whether that's in the legislature or whether that's at the ballot box, you've got to have the most. So don't shut down your votes. Find ways to get the votes that you need to get the process done and do what you need to get done. So I just had one of my fellow council members in St. Charles put a bill forward the other day because he was upset about the high dollar amount on some issues on a consent agenda. 
which speaks to exactly of what you were saying. There are some things that just need to be, they need to get done, yeah. right? It's not sexy. It's not some big, you know, conservative, liberal mindset. I need to buy asphalt to build the road, right? I need to buy concrete to do these kind of things. So what his point was, we're getting some stuff that's some pretty high dollar amount that's on our consent agenda, and we're just voting it through. So he wanted to put a dollar amount that says anything over $100,000 needs to have its own bill, which you go, okay, that actually makes sense. I could, I could see that. I want responsible spending, right? Responsible government. I want that. But anything you do with the highway department is going to be well over that, right? So what you're going to end up doing is just slowing down the process, which is already intentionally slow. Mm -hmm. Government runs slow for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's set up that way. If you're looking for something to be efficient, don't do it through government. It is particularly set up to make sure that it takes the longest path to get there. You have to put together everything from writing an RFP to put together all these things in there. It's got to go through the legislative process. It's designed to be slow. Well, when I need to fix a road, I need to fix a road. Right. And it may not have been broken not that long ago, but it is now. And I need to get the materials and I need to get the road fixed. I need to keep traffic moving, right? There are some things that you just need to look at and say, this is my job as a government official to get this done for the people, which is, I, I think, is where you started. Well, is it, on this is whole it thing. too much to ask to say, I want to get my tax return in a timely manner? That's, that's efficient government. It is. And then the same person who's writing the checks to also be going, you know what? I'm writing this check and I'm doing it in an efficient manner. I'm getting the, getting the tax returns back out. But why are we paying taxes, period? <laughs> I, that's that's I the person. That's a different person. <clears throat> that's the person I want to vote for. And we said off air that the closest. It's interesting because Donald Trump, for all of his media persona, right, that he really is a change candidate. I don't think that there's any doubt that he is the guy who's like, blow it all up and start over because this thing is really jacked up. Right. He is definitely that guy. At the same time, he is willing to compromise. He's a deal maker. He is a great deal maker. Yeah. And I think that we've gotten away from that side of him with a lot of government people, with a lot of legislators, with a lot of whoever's. There are a lot of people who are Trump people who are, let's just burn the house down type folks. Mm -hmm. And I get why they feel that way. I really do. But you can't burn the house down. You've got to keep the trains on track, and you've got to keep them running on time. And in a lot of aspects, Trump follows that Reagan principle of, hey, if I can get 70 or 80 percent of what I want, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that deal, and then I'm going to come back for a second bite of the apple a little bit later on, and I'm going to try to set up that 20 or 30 percent that I didn't get the first time, and I'm going to go back after it. Uh, There is a faction within the parties, and I mean both parties, that are now at it's 100% or you're not a true whatever, right? We are so quick to call any conservative who disagrees with you on anything, you're a rhino. And I'm like, really? And they don't say that as much on the Democrat side. Like, I I was in with uh, Reardon on the roundtable a few weeks ago, and Jane said, yeah, I get called a dino a lot. I'm like, really? I don't, I don't hear that. I don't I've, never, hear, I've never heard that before. No, I didn't I, know that existed on the other side. I, I never hear people using that terminology. No, they usually just call people on the other side that are moderate Democrats extreme MAGA Republicans. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They really do that. Brad is correct. <laughs> that That's true. Well, like, there, there, is yeah. there is a lot of rock throwing. Yeah. There is a lot of rock throwing. Hey, we want to know what you think. Our YouTube live chat poll today is what do you think will happen with regard to the economy this year? Will it A, improve, B, worsen, or C, stay the same? That's going to be an interesting poll that we could talk to Steve Moore about in the Mm -hmm. 1 o'clock hour and find out kind of where he thinks all this stuff is going to go. We have Wiggins America that's coming up a little bit later on this hour. Uh, Next hour, as I said, we're going to talk with Steve Moore. We're going to talk with Evan Brown uh, from Fox News Radio. Uh, We are also going to talk with Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe in the 2 o'clock hour. We've got a lot going on today. But coming up next, we're going to talk with Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg 
who's a former national security advisor with the Trump administration, about what is going on with the Israel situation these days. Stay tuned. It's Mike Elam sitting in for Annie Fry today. I guess I can't say that I am Annie Fry on April Fool's. You're probably not going to believe it. But this is 97.1 FM Talk. This is the Annie Fry Show. Find the podcast, on-demand audio, and more at 971talk.com slash Annie. live from the air comfort service heating cooling and insulation studio nine out of ten homes are under insulated keep the air you're paying to heat where it should be with 15 percent off attic insulation for a free estimate on attic insulation visit aircomfortservice.com we're entering remodeling season if you've considered new windows let me recommend my friends at window world mark cox here here's the great thing about window world not just the preferred window of our hometown St. Louis Blues. They're now the official window of the world champion Kansas City Chiefs. So if you're considering replacement windows, this is the company you want to work with. I'm a satisfied customer. I've got two other windows in my master bathroom. We couldn't be happier with those. They have a lifetime warranty that covers all the parts, all the glass breakage and labor. There's a reason why in just over 20 years of business, They've improved the look and thermal efficiency of 72,000-plus customers in the greater St. Louis area. A window world is fantastic. The windows are so durable. Not only do they stand behind their windows at the showroom, they actually stood on a window right in front of me. You're going to love it. 314-993-1800. That's 314-993-1800 or windowworld.com. We've been here 30 years. 30 Christmases in this house, and we have the traditions that most families have. That's Terry talking about her experience with Rhino Shield ceramic coating. We did Rhino Shield 14 years ago, and the house still looks the same as the first day. Rhino Shield really worked with me to help me get just the right nice soft yellow, and it's 14 years later, and it's the same color. The main reason Terry called Rhino Shield is because it's backed by its 25 year transferable warranty. It just sounded wonderful that we could have the house coated with Rhino Shield and not have to worry about it again for 25 years. Take it from Terry. Give Rhino Shield a call now for a free evaluation. 877-25-RHINO. 877-25-RHINO. Or visit 877-25-RHINO.com. There have been neighbors that have come by and said, did you just have your house painted? Because they wanted to know who the contractor was. And I said, no, it's actually Rhino Shield. 877-25-RHINO.com. Hi, I'm Libby, and I'm a patient at Cardinal Glennon. With your help, Homers for Health can make a huge impact on my hospital. From new spaces to new treatments, a difference is being made for patients every single day. Glennon kids like me owe everything to people like you. Please make your pledge for patients today at homersforhealth.org. Thank you so much for your support. Again, that's homersforhealth.org. You wouldn't trust a butcher to babysit your pet pig. You wouldn't trust a lumberjack to repair your antiques. Or a professional wrestler to be your massage therapist. So why would you trust anyone but Amco to fix your car? For over 50 years, we've been the trusted experts in transmission repair. Amco offers easy payment plan options for most any credit situation. So you can fix it fast and pay it off slow at Amco. Double A. MCO. For details and a list of all station contest rules, visit www.971talk.com slash rules. We're here to help you get registered to vote, whether you're in Missouri or Illinois. Democracy 2024 on 97.1 FM Talk. If you need help getting registered, go to 971talk.com slash vote. So it's April 1st, which means welcome to April Fool's Day. We'll wait and see if you fall for anything. I'd be curious to see if you do fall for something. Let us know about it in the chat. I Just tell on yourself. It's cathartic. It'll make you feel good. It'll get you over it. Things will be better. Uh, while you're there, the YouTube live chat poll of the day is, what do you believe will happen with regard to the economy this year? 
Will it improve? Will it get worse? Or will it stay pretty much the same? So it's going to be curious to see kind of where we end up on that. I think it, it was interesting when I was watching some stuff earlier today, and they were talking about the news on the economy, actually the numbers on the economy, were actually getting a little bit better for President Biden. It was only down to like 75% think the economy's in the crapper, as opposed to 83%. It's still really bad, but it it's not as bad as it used to be. So, yeah, it's hey. we're in that situation where, hey, let's raise prices on everything, especially the most expensive stuff, by over 25% over like a year and a half. <laughs> And then ask you, how's the economy doing? Well, the numbers suggest that they're going in the right direction. And everybody's like, really? Wait a no, 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 no. You know what you just did? You know, you just did this, though. Exactly. You can't just you can't tell me that the numbers are getting better now and make me feel like I'm an idiot. Like, no, the numbers are not getting better. How can you say that? I just got gas this weekend. Yeah, yeah the numbers are not getting better. They're getting better for the gas company, I guess, based yeah. on what I just paid to fill up my tank of gas. Like, that was amazing, but we'll we'll wait and see how this thing continues to play out. I was talking to uh, a friend of mine over the weekend who is a, uh, he's a Democrat. I don't know that he's a Joe Biden fan, but he kind of knows Biden's going to be my guy. Like, I'm, I'm stuck with him no matter what, mm -hmm. right? So he's kind of riding with him, and he was trying to convince me about all the numbers that are going in the right direction. I said, really? That's that's interesting because my bank account sure doesn't feel like it, <laughs> and neither does anybody else that I know. And then you get the news out of today is the day that in California they go to a $20 an hour minimum wage. And it's one of those kind of things that they keep saying, I'm just going to keep jacking up the minimum wage. And I thought, do you not understand how economics works? If you make goods more expensive – or in gas's case, where they're trying to uh, make electric trucks the norm. They want electric trucks, not just vehicles, electric trucks to make up 60% of the transportation fleet by 2032. That's not going to be sustainable. Well, they they so, can't they can't provide the electricity to charge <laughs> the trucks for one company in a town, let alone a 60% fleet. So, oh, my gosh. To hit the charging stations alone. Charging stations alone that they need to build just to get those vehicles the ability to charge is 15,000 charging stations a month between now and 2032. That's that's insane. I mean, that's that's one of those things where you go, come on, this has got to be an, an April Fool's thing, right? One of the things that is not an April Fool's thing is uh, the continued conflict that is going on with Israel and Gaza. And we've had some developments that have happened there. We wanted to welcome Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg, who's joining us today. General, how are you, sir? Mike, I'm doing good. How are you today? You know, I'm better uh, since I'm talking to you because there <laughs> seems to be all kinds of stuff that just keeps changing, uh, in some cases hourly, with what's going on over in the Middle East. And we got the news today that I'm sure you probably saw there was uh, an Iranian Revolutionary Guard commander who seems was killed in Syria today. But the Israelis are saying, really? We, didn't, we don't know anything about that. What do you think? Yeah. Well, I think what you're seeing is uh, I think the Israelis realize they have to basically take this under their own control because they don't believe the U.S. will do it. And the Iranians, uh, in the, where they just killed, the Israelis just killed this guy, General Sahedi. Uh, and and I think it's important they need to do that. It's something we probably should have helped them out doing and given them some, some level of support. But I think the, the Israelis now realize that they're in this fight virtually all their own, and they're being supported, they, Hamas and Hezbollah, by Iran. And Iran is, the, you know, they're, they're the group in the Middle East that is causing the major problems. They're supporting, financing, uh, leading a lot of these organizations, Hezbollah and Hamas, as well, and they're providing targeting, they're providing equipment. Uh, you see that all through there, you know. And then you got to add Yemen, and the same with the Houthis. So I, I, I kind of cre give credit to the uh, to the Israelis for doing something that we probably should have been helping them do. So, but the trouble is, it's all Mike. It's all escalatory now. Now the next question is going to be by killing these senior Iranian officers, and they are senior. What are the Iranians going to do? Will they unleash? 
or try to push Hezbollah to get involved in the fight. And Hezbollah has been very, very reluctant to get involved in this fight. Uh, let's see what, what happens next. But it's, uh, it's more volatile than it was yesterday, that's for sure. I'm curious, uh, just kind of, Brad and I were talking about this earlier today, before the show started, because you had the U.N. vote where the United States abstained. They didn't veto, but they abstained on the U.N. vote. And I'm, I'm just kind of curious, where are we in this conflict? Because from your point and what you just said, it sure feels like Israel is out there on their own. They really don't have an ally they can count on in the United States right now. But then we started reading stories about there are munition shipments from the U.S. that are still going to Israel. So it makes me wonder, do you think there's posturing on the top, but on the bottom they're still sending all the materials that they need? Like, I'm, I'm not sure how to read the conflicting signals I seem to be seeing. Well, I think, Mike, where you come from is, is, I've always said this, when you've got senior leaders talking, they've got to be very careful with what they say, and especially in the United States when it comes to Israel, because what they're doing, we the United States, is we create a gap or a scene, uh, S-E-A-M. And when you create a scene between you and an ally, it allows your adversary to run right at that scene. It's sort of like in the military. We always used to say if you could find an enemy's boundary, that was the scene, attack up the boundary, because that's usually least coordinated, least least effective. So by us making these comments, and then about the UN, which was 14-0 with one abstention, which was ours, we actually gave some running room for Hamas and the Iranians to say, look, you know, the United States is supporting us. They backed us. They abstained. They could have vetoed this. And you never want to do this. You want to speak with one voice with your ally. And if you have a problem with your ally, much like we did in the Trump administration, you pick up the phone, call them in private, say this is the way it is. But, but, but outwardly, you're one team, one fight, and they haven't done that. And then last week, I saw the same thing happen when General Gallant, or Admiral Gallant, when he was the Minister of Defense for Israel, came in, and he was asking for aid in primarily military support. And our Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, kind of lectured him on. And all Gallant was asking for primarily was, was uh, uh, guided munitions they could cut down on collateral support. So is the ammunition flowing? Yeah, but it's almost like every time the Israelis ask for it, they have to come out, come here with their hat in hand, instead of us giving them full support. My recommendation, if I was advising a senior leader, was give them everything they need to, to win this fight. They didn't start this fight, Hamas did. They didn't rape, pillage, kill, uh, murder innocent civilians. Hamas did that. So they're the ones bearing the brunt on this. And we should tell the Israelis, you're fighting against a terrorist organization. Finish the job. Go into, if you have to, go into Rafah, but complete the job. And give them full support. And, and when you equivocate, which this administration has done, it gives an advantage to the opposition, to the adversary, to the enemy. And you never want to be in that position. And yet that's the position the, the Israelis are in. And now they're being questioned about collateral damage. They're being questioned about civilian casualties. They're questioned about use of force. They're being questioned about a ceasefire. They're being questioned about how they're getting the hostages out. It goes on and on. It shouldn't be that way. We're talking to Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg. And, General, I'm, I'm not sure I understand, from the administration's point of view, what are they hoping to get from this? I mean, Netanyahu has made the point numerous times that what they went through with that attack is seven times what we went through in our attack with 9-11. If you, if you work it out population-wise, it's seven 9-11s that they went through in that day. So we would not stand for anyone telling us how we should respond to an attack like that. But yet we keep doing it to them. Our number one ally in a region that we really need to be peaceful, we really need to have a good ground a uh, place that we can expand our presence from, and we have that there. So I don't understand, what is the administration looking to win out of taking this position? Well, we, what you find, Mike, is this administration equivocates. Um, and what I mean by that, it's, it's a leadership style or their DNA that they kind of want to make everybody happy, make everybody feel good, you know, hold hands in a giant circle and sing kumbaya. <laughs> That's not going to happen. And what you've got to do is you've got to lead your way through this, and, you, and there are times when you have to pick sides, and you pick sides that are good, the side of the good. 
you know, Israel is an ally of ours. You know, when you look back what happened in 1945 when we said never again, that we should have really meant that because you made that comment about the percentage of people that they lost on 7 October. It's a stunning number. Yes. But also how they how they lost them as well. So we've kind of said, well, you know, everybody's kind of equal. No, they're not. They're just not. There are good people and there are bad people. There's evil in this world and there's not evil in this world. And it's one of those you pick a side and, and who you have to work with. And this administration doesn't do it. It wants to be happy with everybody. And that's not how it really works in the real world. I mean, it sounds good, feels good, but but it, it, it doesn't solve your problems. If you want to solve problems, you have to make some people, you know, disappoint some people. And that's the way it is. And, and in my point, let's disappoint the right people. In other words, tell Hamas, you're a terrorist organization, you, oh, by the way, when you went in on 7 October, you killed Americans. Oh, by the way, you currently hold Americans hostage. Oh, by the way, you haven't even let the International Red Cross in to see the hostages. So this is one of those. This is on you, and this is what we're going to do. We're going to give full support to Israel, full stop, until they finish the job of clearing out the bombs. So, General, I'm just curious, is, <laughs> is this a, a symptom of a bigger problem? Because... What I'm wondering about, because I've heard all of the the different things and talking about the the fight in Ukraine and then what's going on here, is the United States in a problem mili- militarily to where can we not support our own military if we help these other people? Have we have we ignored what we need to be doing to be able to strengthen our own defenses? Do you think that something is going on here, or I'm just curious. Where is our state of our military at this point? Yeah, you know, Mike, it's a great question. You know, part of the problem we have, and look, I'll get a little bit. Our big five national security problems in the world today, number one is our border. Number two is our military. And then you go to the regional conflicts, the Middle East, Russia, Ukraine, and the Far East as well. But we do have problems within the military, and and it's very pervasive. It's leadership, and it's organizational, and and it's logistics. Here's an example. Because you ask a great question. Just recently, we had a problem with the Sentinel missile system. The Sentinel is going to replace a Minuteman three ICBMs. That's one third of the triad: okay. the missiles, the bombers, and the submarines. The, the Sentinel program just had what's called the Nun McCurdy breach. That means it's a violation that thirty percent is cost overrun, and it could end up killing your program. You have to go. What? What's going on? Or we shut down the second thing. We've shut down ammunition factories in the past. Why? Why do we have single source of supplies for javelins or stingers? So it's been a long-term problem for the United States. That you know, was part of the problem is when you went into peace you know, after the Cold War was over, you forgot to really start thinking about war fighting and the means to fight. It used to be back in the day, we were structured and resourced to fight what we call a 2.5. A level of operation. You would fight two major contingencies, one in the Europe, one in the Far East, plus have a, you know, a, a 0.5, a small capability ready to do something against terrorism. We reduce that to one. Wow. So you can only fight one area. And so you draw down your, your stockpiles of your ammunition and your force structure to go with just one. And our GDP shows that. We're not spending even though there's a, it's masked by a very, very large uh, national defense authorization budget, which is over $800 billion. But it's mass because of where that money goes. So that's the reason I said the second major problem we have is we have to relook really hard about our military and our new administration, where it's going, what it's doing, and how do you get there. So, look, there are five major national security areas in the world today that are all spinning a little bit out of control. And I blame this administration for not keeping their handle on Right. And uh, keeping their hand on the handle. And it's going to cause us problems going into the future. Because it's a great question to ask because people go, Wait a second. Why is the problem? And I, I tell people, look, the most clearing example of the problems you've got in the military is the fact that this year and last year as well, the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force all missed their recruiting goals. Uh, in, but in, there was around 66% of it was their the goal. Right. What that is telling you is the young men and women of America are voting with their feet, and they're voting by not going into recruiting stations. Uh, around around the nation. It also shows why the recruiting command is starting to focus not on the United States writ large, but is now focusing most of their recruiting on the South and the Midwest. 
because that's where a lot of those troops are starting to come from. So you, there are problems out there that are festering that are they're not just necessarily ignored, Mike, but it's almost like they're kind of forgotten. And we need to remind everybody this is where we're at. This is going to take it. This is what we're going to have to do to fix it. But you're so consumed with everything else happening that you forget what's happening with our military. That's the reason I put it right below our border as a second national security threat. You know, and oh, by the way, then you have to worry about, as I said, Europe is having the Middle East, Far East as well. So it's a very complex problem uh, that this administration has kind of whistled past the graveyard. You know, I remember when this administration came in, they said, well, the adults are back in the room. Uh uh-uh, uh, I don't see it that way. I see it more like kids in the sandbox and can't figure their way out of it. Well, General, I appreciate your time today, and that's that's actually extremely frightening, but it's good to hear it talked about because until we actually start talking about the problems that we're facing, we're never going to get the solution. So I appreciate your time today. I hope your Easter was good, by the way. I should have asked you that at the beginning. So I, I hope you had a wonderful Easter, yes? Uh, Mike, I had all my kids around us with him. Uh, my wife and I, and it was fun to have them all home. Plus, we had all the dogs with us, so I felt like a lord in an English manor in the old days. When I was growing, we had seven dogs in the house. I said, this is the way they used to do with these, those scraps of the dogs. Somebody brought their animals with them, so it was a good Easter. That's fantastic. Well, I appreciate you spending some time with us. Hope your April Fool's is not foolish, and uh, we look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me. That is Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg. It's always good to talk to a guy like that who just has amazing insights, and he's able to open up some things that we may not think about. So I appreciate having his time today. We are going to talk to Ryan Wiggins, who is back from Japan. We're not going to hear sushi adventures, I'm sure, but we will find out. I don't know. Maybe we will. (laughs) I mean, that dude spent a lot of time eating sushi over there. To be honest, Ryan's a little sleep deprived, (laughs) so I'm really curious to see what kind of Wiggins America that we're going to have. It's Mike Elam sitting in for Addy Fry today on the Addy Fry Show on 97.1 FM Talk. No, it works for me, still upset you. The Annie Fry Show is streaming online. Watch us live on YouTube and subscribe. I know I'm leaving here a better man. Traffic, no, counselors is where we go when the police has alerts. Go to 45bucks.com. This is Mike Carter, founder of 45bucks.com, or as you know it, Traffic Law Counselors. And right now, around tax time, we know folks are taking care of issues that they may have been putting off for a while. Maybe a driving while suspended or a warrant, things that you may have been worrying about for a little while. And we specialize in keeping folks' records clean. They come to us on a Monday, they can't drive, and by the end of that week on a Friday, we've got them back in the driver's seat driving legally. And that's very gratifying. And God forbid you're wrestling with something like a DWI, you can go to DWISTL.com. We've got 10 paralegals and attorneys that are working on those cases nonstop and depositions, trials, hearings, and we can put that to work for you as well. In fact, it's the enduring success of Traffic Law Counselors that has enabled us to be the preeminent DWI attorneys in St. Louis at DWISTL.com. So now you know, if you have a traffic matter, it's 45bucks.com. If you've got a DWI issue, it's DWISTL.com. Choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. I have a question regarding air conditioning. What temperature outside does it need to be before you turn or your spouse or your dad or mom, grandma, grandpa, or whoever is in charge of the um, thermostat? What temperature outside is your air conditioning turn on? My house, it's when it gets over 70, 72 degrees, the air conditioner is without a question coming on, especially if it's 70 or 72 degrees uh, in the evening when I'm getting ready to um, go to bed. I need it at 68. That's me. How about if I told you there was a way that if you did call me and I showed you how you can keep your temperature where you want it, where you're comfortable, and maybe not spend any more? If you're interested, then call me. Spart Inman, 314-293-2600 or spartinman.com plus 0% for 60 months on the brands that we offer you. Mortgage rates have finally dropped. That's right. Golden Oak has 5.375% fixed rates available right now. Our average cash out customer saves over $1,000 a month. Call today and take advantage of our 5.375 fixed rate. Call 314-567-GOLD. That's 314-567-GOLD. Golden Oak, Lansing, Short, my blue. 
5.934 APR. FHA 15-year 20% equity qualified credit. Additional terms apply. NMLS 114937. I can see clearly now thanks to the doctor's doctors at Ophthalmology Associates. Doctors Greg Birdie, Ranjan Maholtra, Robert Brusati, Andy Royer, and introducing Samuel Berry. You can too. Call 314-966-5000 or check out youreyedoc.com. That's youreyedoc.com. For today's YouTube live chat poll, we're asking the question, what do you believe will happen in regards to the economy this year? Will it improve? Will it get worse? Or will it stay the same? Love to know your outlook because these are the kind of things that they actually do watch, consumer sentiment and things like that. So uh, we'll just include this poll into the national consumer sentiment polls, and we'll let you know how it goes at the end of the show. 12.45. This time check is sponsored by Jerry Kelly Heating and Air Conditioning. It's time for a $98 AC tune-up. JerryKelly.com Don't miss the Mark Cox Morning Show Spring Bourbon Fling at Clayton Winehouse. Kim Sainanch here. Join Mark and me on Thursday, April 18th from 5.30 to 8 p.m. We'll try Proof and Wood, RD1, Four Roses, and more. Tickets are on sale now at 971talk.com slash events. Listening to the Annie Fry Show on St. Louis's home for conservative talk. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion sits? Really? <laughs> I love Ritz crackers, by the way. Those are those are some of my favorites. Hey, hope you're going to get involved involved in the YouTube live chat poll. What do you think will happen with regards to the economy this year? Will it get better, improve, will it worsen, or will it stay the same? I am just hoping that uh, I do not have any more damage on my car after the weather that looks like it's coming through. I know Brad said don't talk about it, don't speak it into existence. but uh, Yeah, he asked me earlier, he's yeah. like, did you get any hail damage in the last round of storms? I was like, no, and I would appreciate it if you didn't <laughs> ask me if it was happened, because this time it will. Sorry, my car got beat to crap during the last one. Yeah, I and just, I get that misery loves company, but I wouldn't does. wish that on anyone. I don't wish that on anyone. I oh, just it sounds like you do. I, I, <laughs> well, I'm waiting to find out. My car went through the inspection phase and i'm waiting to find out if they're going to total it or not i, I was surprised oh, it's that bad. oh yeah it, but it wasn't only just the roof and the hood it's the sides of my car it hit the sides and put golf ball sized dents in it and I, it cracked my windshield so yeah my car is beats a crap so I, I kind of want to just leave it out there and, and let yeah, it, just let it go. Just let's finish, go, man. Finish the job. Let's finish it off. Let's let's be done with that. As I understand it, last time it came through, the further north you were in the listening area, the worse it was. It for was you. it was really bad south too. I uh, was at seventy and seventy nine where it came through. Oh really? See, so I I thought that the line was right through the middle of St. Louis. And the farther north you got it into St. Charles it and split. Edwardsville, so it yeah. went south too. There's like a, yeah, a, a little parents, bit that went south. My okay. parents' cars got hammered pretty bad. Yeah, because we up in uh, O'Fallon, just north of I-70, is where my car was, and it was golf ball size yeah, to get yeah. there. There were some places that got softball size, and those windshields just just got destroyed. Uh, hey, I don't want to waste any more time here because this is one of my favorite segments when I get to do the Annie Fry Show. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Wiggins America. Wiggins! Oh! Monday Rounder! Yeah! Oh, this here's the wildest ride in the wilderness! All right, well, you mentioned it, but we didn't get to dive into it too much, so I will mention it again. We're diving. What to know about the new minimum wage law in California? So if you're if you're curious as to what the wages are going to, uh, they're going to be about a 25% bump. They're going from $16 an hour to $20 an hour in California. The most wonderful thing is that if you're now making $20 an hour in California for working fast food, all of your stuff went up by about 25%. <laughs> That's not in the article. I am adding that part. So um, at the end of the day, what you're really going to do is just pay more taxes. Yeah, you're going to be, that's, yes, right. That's you're really, you're going to make less yeah, because exactly. you're paying more in taxes because you're right. making more. Um, Congratulations. You're not but, the poverty level anymore. But if you were co- uh, confused about the way that this was playing out, because there was uh, there was a carve out for certain businesses. Oh, I think I've heard this one. Oh, remember yeah. this? Don't, Do you remember don't this? You, don't you like get a carve out if you bake bread as part of your business? And, but it's not just if you bake bread. You also have to donate to Gavin Newsom. <laughs> yes. If, if you were one of the big donors to Gavin Newsom, like, say, casinos, you got a carve out. Yes, there were 
there were lots of carve outs for this <laughs> law. Uh, one of them was that you had to have 60 or more locations. Uh, so they were trying to hit the national brands yes. a little bit more with these. So if you had 59 locations of you're your good. Zaxby's or whatever it was, uh, you're fine. You you could still charge $16 an hour. But if you had 60 locations, you had to charge $20 an hour. Now, hang on. It, is it 60 in California? No, or it's 60, 60 in total, the chain? Total. Okay. In the country. So your McDonald's burger is about to cost you... $8. Well, I love some of the quotes here because they, they were quoting Chipotle and McDonald's executives on what would happen. And they all said, well, uh, we think costs are going to go up. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, across the board, they all said, look, this is a pretty significant increase to our labor costs. And uh, McDonald's CEO Chris Kempzemke or something like that said uh, the company's Q3 earnings call, uh, this is going to hit everyone, including our competitors. And that we're going to try to explore because McDonald's, they're, they're saying, because we're one of the biggest, we're going to try to explore ways that we could offset this in ways that are not going to raise prices because we guarantee, here's the key point, everybody else's prices are going up. Yeah. So if there's a way, and they didn't even say that they could. They said, if there's a way for us oh. to not raise prices, right. we'll actually benefit from this because everybody's prices so, are going so up. So the big companies that can afford to find innovative ways to not raise prices are going to, you know, be fine. And then the little companies that really are just relying on employees and that, they're the ones that are going to get host. Uh, you have accurately assessed this situation. Oh, man. And just so you know. Just an update on the little on, guys. Just, just and gentlemen. an update on Panera Gate. They <laughs> have excluded, or they have sorry, included now Panera into this. Oh, because of the public backlash <laughs> that oh, if you donate to the governor, he'll exclude you from this law. They said now nah, he actually has carved it back in. <laughs> I I did hear some folks talking earlier today in California who said they are under the 60 rule, so this would not apply to them. What they said is going to apply to them is their employees are going to leave mm -hmm. and go work for Naturally. someone else to Naturally. get the... It's $4 an hour more. So they're going to leave and go there, which is going to leave them with an employee problem. What the bigger chains are saying they're going to do is they're going to put more technology into place. Like if you go to Panera right now, you can just enter in your, your loyalty number and order whatever you mm -hmm. want and pay yep. at a kiosk, which means that's a job I don't need to have anymore. But did you notice, by the way, that people are so crooked. Uh, if you leave them to their own uh, instances, they will they will just steal you blind. So Panera used to put out their coffee cups. Yes. They had to take them back. Do you know why? No, is it theft of coffee? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> People came in and they acted like they were putting stuff in the kiosk, and then they would just grab a coffee cup and go oh fill up with gosh. coffee. The fact that they would go to the trouble of acting like they were punching in their numbers. Well, they. I or, mean, I think they had to do something to or not they would raise order suspicion. their food and not pay for a drink, and they would just pop the drink out and get a free drink. There you I go. I feel bad about that when I order water. They give you the cup that's a little bit different. Yes. I I'll, I, I will never get soda because I just feel so bad. Like, I, my conscience is killing me. I can't get soda. In this thing. Even if I just want to get a little, like a little try of a drink or something, I will do it. Those are the little kind of things that you're going to see change. You're going to have technology that's going to get put into it, and you're going to cost people jobs because they couldn't do this. But I guess that's how technology moves forward. That's how California moves forward. <laughs> Uh, other side, other side of the country now, South Carolina. So yeah. very, very different politics in South Carolina. They have discovered that they have a secret bank account in South Carolina with $1.8 billion in it. What? And nobody knows where it came from. The state? The state of South Carolina. So it's so funny. Like, government's always incompetent. Right. But if you look at a red state, at least they're in the in the black. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, we didn't, you know, because a, a blue state's going to go, oh, shoot, $1.8 billion that we didn't know we spent. It's, prob it's probably. A conservative like state's going, oh, we found $1.8 billion. It's We're still incompetent. It's our emergency fund. We Merry forgot Christmas. we had. But the, the, the <laughs> senator, Larry Grooms, who's a, a South Carolina senator, is spearheading this investigation into this big money mystery that they said that the panel still does not have information from the state's treasury office as to where the money was supposed to go until the origin of the money is traced 
This senator, Larry Grooms, has proposed legislation that would allow him to move the large sum into a lockbox account where it will accrue interest. Apparently, they're thinking this stems from something involving a 2010 computer system shift that caused the issue, but they don't know for sure that when this shift in the computer systems happened, they had this bank account that just didn't make it into the new system and has just been sitting there. So accruing interest. Yes. Well, but, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> but it is at a bank. Uh, in, yeah, let's see. Untouched secret bank account. Yes. Yeah. So you would figure somebody's been getting statements. That's a lot of that's a lot of money to be in one account. You know what? I bet they started sending the statements electronically to someone who's no longer there and no one's been getting the statements anymore. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. That's probably what it is. Well, Simple they, they, oversight. They did say that the treasurer who's been embattled in some weird scandal stuff. I don't even know if it's like big scandal or just, you know, little internal scandal stuff. <laughs> Uh, the treasurer, Chris Loftus, claimed to have invested the funds in the mystery account, but then I guess he's not in office anymore. And so you're right. It, it's somebody who was there who's no longer there was oh, getting all the It used to come to my email, but now it, it doesn't go anymore. Real quick, uh, before we run out of time here, last one. Trump bashes the resigning GOP representatives as cowards and weaklings. Um, Amen. Uh, no kidding. I mean, this needs to get some attention. Representative Ken Buck is one of them from Colorado who's leaving. Uh, another one is uh, – look, I'm missing the name here, but there's another one leaving. leaving Gallagher. Gallagher leaving the uh, GOP with a one-seat majority, assuming yes. these guys do actually resign. And they're apparently not doing it for any other Does reason it, other than they can probably make a little more money if they quit now. It sounds to me uh, – they're just – well, it doesn't sound to me. It seems to me like they're just proving everything that everybody accused them of being as true. Yes. They don't really care about the party. They're in it for themselves. And whenever they couldn't get their way anymore, they took their ball and went home. Yes. That's, that's Wiggins America. My name is Mike Elam sitting in for Annie Fry. Steve Moore coming up on the other side at 97.1 FM Talk. So happy. When you're approaching retirement, there are a lot of questions to answer. Do you have enough money to fund your income for life? How should you claim Social Security? And what's your plan for health care and long-term care? Hi. I'm Eric Robert, Director of Investments with the ClearPath Wealth Management Group at Stiefel and host of On the Money, Saturday mornings at 11 on 97.1 FM Talk. Don't leave your retirement to chance. It's crucial to understand and address relevant risks before you retire. Our team can help you get organized, guide you through critical retirement decisions, and create an investment portfolio designed around your needs. To schedule your free retirement plan consultation, go to clearpathinvesting.com. That's clearpathinvesting.com. Or call us at 636-695-2650. That's clearpathinvesting.com or 636-695-2650. Stiefel Nicholas and Company Incorporated, member SIPC and NYSE. The Cardinals open the 2024 season at home on Thursday, April 4th. Don't miss the tradition and excitement of opening day at Bush Stadium. That day, all fans 21 and older will take home the 2024 Magnet schedule thanks to Budweiser. Never miss a game with this convenient information hub. That's Thursday, April 4th, the Cardinals home opener and the 2024 Magnet schedule presented by Budweiser. Tickets still remain. Get yours at cardinals.com slash promotions. This is Lance Lynn, St. Louis Cardinals for the Lou. The Cardinals host the Marlins Saturday, April 6th, and that day, 25,000 fans, 16 and up, take home a Cardinals Hall of Fame car parade bobblehead. That's courtesy of Ford. Be surprised at the gates when you get one of the two mystery bobbleheads. Will it be Jason Isringhausen, or will it be the secret weapon, Jose Okendo? Find out and get your tickets and more information by going to cardinals.com slash promotions. This is Ozzy Smith, St. Louis Cardinals for the Lube. Mike Carter here of Carter Law Offices. You know, as an attorney, I make my way across the great state of Missouri on a pretty regular basis. And from the rivers to the lakes and the Ozark Mountains, it's really just a pleasure to travel across the great state of Missouri. And, you know, not to mention, we have the best sports team and the best cities and the friendliest small towns in America, it seems like. And Carter Law Offices wants to make sure Missouri's story gets out far and wide about our excellent business climate, our exceptional workforce. You'll hear more from me soon, Mike Carter. Visit MikeCarter.com to see Mike's interviews with all of Missouri's elected leaders. 
Mike Carter here of Carter Law Offices. You know, as an attorney, I make my way across the great state of Missouri on a pretty regular basis. And from the rivers to the lakes and the Ozark Mountains and the richest farmland around, it's really just a pleasure to travel across the great state of Missouri. And, you know, not to mention, we have the best sports team and the best cities and the friendliest small towns in America, it seems like. And Carter Law Offices wants to make sure Missouri's story gets out far and wide about our excellent business climate, our exceptional workforce. You'll hear more from me soon, Mike Carter. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. KFTK FM Florissant from the Under Law Injury Lawyers. Get Jim.com Studio 971 FM Talk. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Wants more information on Lisa Brady. Fox News is after Israel's parliament just passed a law that could let the prime minister stop Al Jazeera from broadcasting in Israel. Prime Minister Netanyahu calls it a terror channel and says he'll shut it down. If it is true, uh, a move like this is concerning. We believe in the freedom of the press. It is critical. It is critically important, and the United States supports the critically important work journalists around the world do. Spokeswoman Karine Jean-Pierre says the White House is also concerned about reports of executions with doctors, women, and children among the dead after Israeli forces spent two weeks targeting Hamas at Gaza's largest hospital, saying its troops killed only militants. Jean-Pierre says Hamas puts civilians at risk. And we are concerned by how Hamas appears. They, they appear to have been able to reconcentrate in a hospital uh, so quickly. U.S. and Israeli officials are holding a virtual call today. The U.S. also gathering information about what happened in Syria, where Iranian state media says an Israeli airstrike hit a consular section of Iran's embassy in Damascus, killing several people, including a top Iranian general, State Department spokesman Matthew Miller. Of course, we are always uh, concerned about, um, uh, about anything that would be escalatory or um, cause an increase in conflict in the region. Israel has not confirmed an airstrike in Syria. Disbarred attorney and convicted killer Alec Murdoch is sentenced to 40 more years in prison for financial crimes. This federal sentence will run concurrently to his sentence for life and then some after the state of South Carolina found him guilty in the killings of his wife and adult son. Those killings led to an intense investigation revealing claims of widespread fraud as Murdoch once a prominent attorney was accused of stealing millions in settlement money from clients. Fox is up in brown. Murdoch is still seeking a new trial. America is listening to Fox News. Waiting on a tax return? Hopefully it ends up in your hands. Fraudulent tax returns due to identity theft increased by 30% in 2023. If you're in a bind this tax season, LifeLock can help. Our U.S.-based restoration specialists are experts dedicated to helping solve your identity theft issues. And all LifeLock plans are backed by the Million Dollar Protection Package. So we'll reimburse you up to the limits of your plan if you lose money due to identity theft. Help protect your information this tax season with LifeLock. Save up to 25% your first year with promo code NEWS at LifeLock.com. Are you over 30 and putting off life insurance? It's time to get a quick quote from Ethos, a better, easier way to get term life insurance, all online with no medical exam. Answer a few health questions and you could be approved for up to $2 million. Isn't it worth 10 minutes to help protect your family's financial security? Ethos, up to $2 million in coverage with no medical exam. Some policies as low as a dollar a day. Answer a few health questions and get your free quote at checkethos.com. That's checkethos.com. Air Comfort Service, heating, cooling, and insulation, weather. It's a springtime atmosphere this afternoon with a changeable sky, and we're watching for scattered showers and thunderstorms, 75 for the high. Tonight, periods of rain and storms. Some of them could be on the strong side, especially during the evening before sunset. Windy in 48. Tuesday, a couple of showers around in the morning. Otherwise, mostly cloudy, windy, 55 on Tuesday, but temperatures drop into the 40s on Tuesday afternoon. This is 97.1 FM Talk. Chief Meteorologist Dave Murray. Shows that make a difference. Mark Cox, Brian Kilmeade, Annie Fry, Mark Reardon, and Dana Lash, Heidi Harris, Wiggins America. Where St. Louis comes to talk. 971 FM Talk. Traffic, law, counselors is where we go when the police has us. Go to 45bucks.com. This is Mike Carter, founder of 45bucks.com, or as you know it, Traffic Law Counselors. And right now, around tax time, we know folks are taking care of issues that they may have been putting off for a while. Maybe a driving while suspended or a warrant, things that you may have been worrying about for a little while. And we specialize in keeping folks' records clean. They come to us on a Monday, they can't drive, and by the end of that week on a Friday, we've got them back in the driver's seat driving legally. 
And that's very gratifying. And God forbid you're wrestling with something like a DWI. You can go to DWISTL.com. We've got 10 paralegals and attorneys that are working on those cases nonstop and depositions, trials, hearings. And we can put that to work for you as well. In fact, it's the enduring success of traffic law counselors that has enabled us to be the preeminent DWI attorneys in St. Louis at DWISTL.com. So now you know if you have a traffic matter, it's 45bucks.com. If you've got a DWI issue, it's DWISTL.com. Choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. Join us at Odyssey as we all do our one thing, together millions of things, for our planet. Earth Day is April 22nd. Clean out harsh cleaning products and detergents and look for cleaning products with green certification. What's your one thing? Hello, this is Chad Clayman with Clayman Group, K-L-A-M-E-N group.com, where we buy houses direct and as is conditioned with no middleman involved. I recently bought a house from somebody that was embarrassed to let me in the door. There was stuff all over the place and the entire house smelled like smoke. However, we were definitely able to see the potential. We gave them a great cash offer that they were very happy with. So if you have a house that isn't in the best shape, maybe in disrepair, we're interested in making you an as is cash offer. Please reach out today, K-L-A-M-E-N group. Group.com. The Annie Fry Show YouTube live chat poll of the day is sponsored by Ruler Foods. Low prices, no coupons. Ruler Foods. That is exactly what I needed to hear. Thank God someone here knows what they're talking about. That's us. That's right. Gotta love this American ride. All right, you need to take the time and get the full picture. I love the ladies. I mean, they rev my engine, but they don't belong in the newsroom. It is Anchor Man, not Anchor Lady. What do you want from me? I'm not a Goodness sake, Keith. Keep your voice down. Your father's listening to the radio. I'm not a This is the Annie Fry Show. Happy April Fool's Day, everybody. Hope your day is going well. Nobody's been able to do a gotcha moment yet. My friend Brad Hildebrand owns some uh, radio stations, and he had a thing earlier today that said he just went in and sold all his radio stations after 51 years. He is getting out of the radio business, and he has decided to team up with a couple of ladies that he knows. Uh, One is named Sugar. The other is named Fire, and they are going to start a barbecue business over in Sauge, Illinois. I said, of course. That's, that's not <laughs> yeah. an April Fool's Day uh, joke April at all. Fools. <laughs> I, I don't think Brad knows two women. That's just that's the first <laughs> thing. First thing that made me say that. Man, that with friends can't, like you, Mike. <laughs> can't be true. But it's definitely not two women that are going to go into business with him. That's, you know, that's definitely uh, definitely an April Fool's thing. So I, I hope your day is going better. And your April Fool's Day jokes that you get are definitely better than that one. We would love to know your opinion on the YouTube live chat poll. What do you believe will happen with regard to the economy this year? Will it improve? Will it worsen? Or will it stay the same? Make sure that you get your votes in. We're going to talk about that at the end of the show, which should be really good. We're hoping to talk to Steve more, but who knows? Uh, Steve gets busy sometimes. Luckily, uh, we didn't get a chance to go through everything with Wiggins America. We talked a little bit about this stuff. You know, it's funny talking with with Steve comes back if we're able to connect with him, talking about the economy and how are things going to go. It plays into your story that you had with what's going on in L.A. It, and it's like people don't understand how economics works, right? Uh, and it's one of those things that you've heard people say before. You can't make poor people wealthy by taking wealth from the wealthy people and giving it to them, right? It just doesn't work that way. If you don't understand how money works, then money's going to go through your hands just like it did before, right? So you've got to understand the whole principle. I saw a guy years ago, Jim Rohn, not the not the guy who does the sports talk stuff, okay. Jim Rohn. Um, he has since passed, but he used to talk about the fact, whenever you set out your goals, one of your goals should be to make a million dollars. And he said, you should do that not because of what a million dollars will bring you, but what you will learn on your way to making a million dollars. And it's why there are people throughout history who have made a fortune, lost a fortune, 
but they're able to make another fortune in many times larger than the one that they lost. Donald Trump has been a great example of that. He's made a fortune and lost a fortune at least twice that I know of. And it's one of those kind of things of if you know how it works, the system works, then you're able to get to wherever you need to go. But if you don't have that knowledge, it doesn't really matter how much I grease your wheels. You're never going to be able to make the car run mm-hmm. as efficiently as what it needs to be to get you there. And it feels like that's kind of the story with California and others, unlike South Carolina, where, hey, we just found $1.8 billion. It was sitting <laughs> in the sock drawer. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess my ex left that when she left. Yeah, you you just can't um, you can't force you you can't use the power of government to create wealth. Yeah, at, which is ultimately what this is, and you can apply that principle to a lot of things, including what California is doing here with fast food, where they're they're saying we're going to require you as a business to pay your employees more. Well, that sounds nice. That's right. that because it sounds like you're forcing the big guy to help out the little guy. I, everybody who hears that probably in principle goes, boy, I'd love to see that happen. If you do it through government, though, it just doesn't work because then you're forcing big guys, quote unquote, big guys, because right. sometimes they're not that big, uh, to do things that sometimes aren't even within their means to do. And that means that the business that was supporting the little guy sometimes just doesn't doesn't survive it goes under and then the little guy doesn't have a job (laughs) so uh what happens to the little guy then well the government steps in again and says well we'll take care of you now we'll put you on welfare we'll take care of you in one of our many social safety nets it's just the the principle of government stepping into the economy that gums up the works because it always sounds nice and this is the way people get elected Sometimes I think those people actually do believe these things. They're just that dumb that they don't understand. Other times I think they they actually do understand and they don't care. They just want to get elected. There are things, to your point, that it's not just economy. Uh, We were talking about the fact of that the Biden administration wants all trucks by 2032 to be electric. Just looking at that principle Mm -hmm. on its own. Right. So what is what has the Biden administration done over the past three years that is going to keep that from being a reality? Number one is energy independence. What do you need to make an electric truck go power? It's got to be charged. So that means you have to have a charging station. We don't have enough charging stations in the United States to be able to charge the electric vehicles to get them to where they need to be on time. Right. So what does that mean? Well, that means we have to build, from what the story that I read earlier today said, 15,000 charging stations every month from now until 2032. I think we can all agree that ain't going to happen. But just for the sake of argument, let's say it will. Let's say they can do that. The problem there is a charging station has to have energy. Where's it going to get the energy? We already know in places like California who keep mandating these electric vehicles, their energy grid cannot support the current needs of Californians, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can't afford the current energy needs that you have, why would you put a heavier demand on your electric grid? That makes no sense at all. Put on top of that the fact that you're going to make sure that you cannot create more energy within the state of California. They won't do nuclear power. They have made sure that you cannot mine for coal in the state of California. They have to rail coal in from other states, which is more than anything that really just drives me out of my mind. Liberals who are all about climate, right? The whole globe climate. I can't mine for it here, but I understand I'm going to have to have coal to run my coal fire power plants. So I'm going to be okay with it being mined somewhere else outside of the United States and then sent here because I did my part to keep the world clean. No, what you did was force someone else 
who doesn't have your same principles, who's willing to do as dirty of energy production as they have to do to be able to produce the energy. They'll take all the shortcuts. China supposedly is building a new coal-fired power plant every month or every quarter, something like that. They're They're doing doing it a lot. So what you're doing is you're putting emissions that you don't like even more into your climate because it's a global climate and it's coming back to you. So what you're actually doing is taking the problem that you claim to be morally opposed to and you're going to do everything you can to stop it from happening and you're guaranteeing that not only is it going to happen, it's going to happen in the biggest way that you could possibly oppose. And somehow, this is the part that drives me bananas, somehow that squares in your liberal mind. How does that square in your mind? It doesn't square. It doesn't square in their mind. I, I was, I've been thinking about this for a really long time. It is short-sighted uh Short-sighted thinking. Yes. They don't think that down the road. They don't realize that. They won't go to the next step. They don't. They say, okay, this is what we need to do. We need to have everybody in an electric car. So we'll just make everybody get an electric car. And that's where they stop on the consequences because they say, well, electric cars don't put out any tailpipe emissions. emissions. Therefore, they're cleaner than gasoline-powered cars, internal combustion engines and whatever. What they don't realize is is the the amount of copper that has to go into it compared to the amount of copper that's in a regular car. They don't realize the amount of road damage that those cause because now you're putting more weight on the road because an EV weighs more because of the batteries. Yes. They don't realize that the, the current infrastructure, guardrails and whatnot, are not strong enough to stop an EV at 60 miles an hour like they are an internal combustion engine thing. They don't understand where this lithium is going to come from that they want to make these batteries out of. They don't understand any of this stuff. All they know is EV's good, green, no exhaust pipes out the emission, no tailpipe uh, exhaust. Well, the other part about it is what batteries do you do with it when you're done? die. <laughs> exactly. Where are you going to put all of these bad batteries, right? So when your battery reaches its end of life stage, it's got to go somewhere. Where are you going to dispose of it? You don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about where's this battery going to have to go because I don't really have a good workable plan for recycling a battery because you can't. But you guys are not talking about one thing, and that's that it makes me feel good. (laughs) That's all that really matters. I don't care about that stuff because it makes me feel good to pretend that I did something important well and like the other side of that is is the assumption that people that are on our side of the aisle look at the environment and go ah screw it we want to tear it all up just so that we don't have to drive that's not true at all and that's That's not so not true that's not accurate we're saying hey this might be a good thing we're looking toward this but there are some intermediary steps that we need to take before we can get to your utopia of of EVs everywhere and no emissions and completely green economy. We're not there yet. The technology isn't there yet. And you're all going to just try to force this through and put a lot of people in poverty. I sat down with a good friend of mine uh, just before Christmas who is actually in not necessarily that industry, but he's in the technological sector. Okay. He deals with, he, he lives here, but he deals with Silicon Valley a lot. And before pre- pandemic, he was traveling the world all over the place. He was in China and India. He, he's just a connected guy. And Sounds like he's it. in the business of well a lot of things, but one of the one of the things he's trying to do is is be involved in that Silicon Valley app creation where there's just money flowing like it's wine, you know. Right. He, so there's so much money in it. Anyway, I sat down and talked with him. He, I would say, he's probably traditionally a conservative, but he very much exists outside of the normal talk that we do, where it's one side versus the other, because in the economy. He actually is, he's one of those people who's so knowledgeable that he's like, well, yes, I generally believe in conservative principles, but here's how they're actually playing out. And one of the things he talked about was, he's like, I- I'm against the EV stuff just as much as you guys are. The problem is that we're subsidizing oil and gas production so much that we don't even talk about how much the government's involved in that. Mm-hmm. And just the different things, the angles that he's like exp- speaking from experience about. Right. That y- when you hear it, you go, well, you're very knowledgeable about this clearly. One of the things that he said, 
and he's he's very much an environmentalist. That's why I brought him up, Brad, is because um, he is one of those guys who, just like you're saying, he's very very concerned about the environment. I remember years ago he was talking about the the nature of having clean water and things. You just just very much on his mind. He said, EVs, electric vehicles, definitely are the future. Like there's no doubt about it. Okay. It's just that we're down here on the S curve. The technology just isn't quite where it should be yet. Right. Now, within the next 20 years, it's going to explode. Sure. The technology is going to get to the point where you will have more and more people driving these things because they will become more affordable, because the infrastructure will create itself. The government will probably be involved in some of it, but that's, you know, neither here nor there. He's just saying that with combustible engines, we're at the top of that S curve. We've gotten the technology about as good as we can get it. On the other side is the S curve of the EVs where all of the future is ahead. So he said, technologically, that's where it's going to go. But just let it go there. Just let it happen. Organically. You don't have to get as involved as a state like California or the federal government is trying to get. Because if you do, you're going to create bubbles that pop, that ruin industries yes. that, that ruin people's lives and, and and their incomes because you can't sustain it if you let it happen the way it's supposed to happen it'll sustain itself yeah well the other side of that is too by forcing it and you're like you were saying you're at the bottom of the s curve in that technology you are going to create an unenjoyable experience for consumers and consumers are going to have a bad taste in their mouth and what you're actually going to do is push the adoption of evs farther down the road the natural adoption yeah. of them than what they would be if you just got out of the way and just let it happen naturally. I really thought that the bridge to all this was going to be hybrids. Hybrids seem to be going over pretty well. People like the fact that I still have, if, if I want to drive from here to California, then I can start off on that battery charger and I can get through the municipal area, get out on the highway, but I don't have to wait for an hour to charge or whatever. I can stop, use the bathroom, grab some food and keep trucking down the road after I fill up with petrol, right? So we can get down the road a little bit better. And everybody seemed to be kind of buying in to this hybrid part of it. It allowed me to live my life the way I currently am, and I'm going to let that uh, progress happen organically and get us to where the batteries can be. I can drive cross-country, right. or I can at least drive, you know, a day's worth of driving because at some point you probably will have to stop, right? But if you look at the weight, to your point about roads, what the weight is of an electric car, now imagine what that weight is going to be of a semi to carry that same amount. That is huge. Your roads are going to get torn to shreds in a very short period of time. But it seems to be kind of where Ryan was going with this of... For the environmentalist, I've got my story straight. Don't confuse me with facts, right? Quit going there. And I, I know we need to take a break, so I don't want to get down this road. But I, that is my whole part with the people who fight against creationism. That's a whole other oh, welcome to yeah. Easter. It's, <laughs> Let's it's go like, there. hey, I, I want to go back to evolution. And it's like, okay, but you if you keep pushing them back, Go one step back, one step back, one step back. It takes them a while where they just have to go, I don't know. You know, and then they come up with their own, this is how it all happened. And I'm like, okay, so you're willing to believe that, but you're not willing to believe creationism. Okay, that's that, it's just good to know. At what point do you, does your story fall apart and you're like, well, I'm, I'm not going to talk about that part going backwards, right? And that's kind of where I think a lot of these folks are where I'm, I'm good with the no emissions, I'm good with it makes me feel good, like I'm doing something that I need to do to protect the environment, but I'm going to ignore all those parts of my story that don't fill into my confirmation bias of where I already am and where I want to go. So mm, uh, we are going to talk with Evan Brown on the other side from Fox News Radio. He is down in Miami. Uh, we will have a conversation with him coming up on the Annie Fry Show. My name is Mike Elam, sitting in for Annie today on St. Louis's home for conservative talk, 97.1 FM Talk. So is this mind. is the Annie Fry Show. Follow Annie on Twitter at Annie Fry Show. Baby, baby. 
The IRS definitely ramped up operations since the pandemic slowed them down, and activity only increases from here. Hi, this is Land Story with the Land Story Law Firm. If you're currently under audit or you haven't paid your taxes in the past, now's the time to call the Land Story Law Firm. The IRS has a published Taxpayer Bill of Rights, which says you have the right to retain legal representation. Because IRS problems are legal problems, and the Land Story Law Firm focuses specifically on addressing IRS issues for our clients. It's all we do. We get out in front of the IRS, devise the best resolution plan, and work to make sure you're able to take advantage of every program you're qualified to receive. So before you send money to some out-of-town, high-pressure company, call the Land Story Law Firm. We're local, located right here in St. Louis. Our Visit Lance, D-R-U-R-Y Law.com to schedule your free consultation with your local tax resolution law firm, the Lance Story Law Firm, 314-260-6120. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. Imagine having all the money you need for retirement, all the income, every month, guaranteed. That's Secure Future Investor, an indexed annuity tied to growth in the stock market. But without any risk of loss ever. It's guaranteed money for life income, no matter how long you live. Call 888-509-2228. 888-509-2228. Sponsored by GP Agency, Inc., Raleigh, North Carolina. Licensed in all states. Performance may vary. Consult with your financial professional before making an investment decision. eBay Motors is here for the ride. 120,000 miles of night drives, daily commutes, and who knows how many. Are we there yet? Through countless fixes, elbow grease, and a new radiator, you kept your ride alive. With eBay Motors, you have over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor, and Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash free. Ramp.com slash free. R-A-M-P dot com slash free. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. You're listening to the Annie Fry Show live from the Air Comfort Service Heating, Cooling, and Insulation Studio. Nine out of ten homes are under-insulated. Is yours? Did you know that there's an R value associated with insulation? To find out your R value or for free insulation estimate, visit aircomfortservice.com. This is the Annie Fry Show. Hey, it's Mike Keelum sitting in for Annie Fry today on this April Fool's Day. Hope you're having a good one. Uh, I don't know if you've seen all these stories about squatters. It seems to be going on all over the place, and there's a big fight about what to do. Evan Brown is joining us from Fox News Radio right now. Evan, how are you? Good afternoon. Hey, appreciate you taking some time. Hope your April Fool's is going well. Nobody's got you yet, uh, have they? So far, so good. You know, hasn't uh, hasn't blown up in my face yet. Keep your guard up, man. We'll see what's going on. <laughs> hey, you've been following this squatter story of what's going on, and Florida seems to be taking the most aggressive stance on combating it of any state that I've seen so far. Certainly seems that way. This, um, you know, the squatter thing that I, I guess it just sort of captured the national imagination that, uh, you know, this idea that you could come home from grocery shopping and all your stuff's missing and someone else completely moved in while you were gone and going, ah, I've been here for a while. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, that, that really isn't happening. What it's, what it, where it's happening is like if um, someone has a, a property that's vacant for some reason, either there's a structure on there that they've moved into uh, and they're not paying rent and they weren't, you didn't know that they were there or they overstayed a lease that has expired, or maybe it's undeveloped land. That someone parked a trailer on, uh, to, to most states, to get rid of someone like that, you'd have to go through the court process of eviction and and have it have the sheriff deal with it. Where you know, but you've got to go through the whole process, and they get a due process to to prove that they're the the uh, they're the lawful tenant, and 
this whole thing could take months. Now in Florida, there is a law that came on the books just last week that says um, if uh, the cops show up and you're accused of squatting, you better have a lease that you can show that's in effect, that's legal. It's not counterfeit. Otherwise, you could uh, you could be charged with a crime. Uh, and if you've done a damage to the uh, property in excess of a thousand dollars, then you can be charged with a felony. Wow. Um, so uh, the the idea here is to make squatting uh, not uh, hospitable and uh, and 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 therefore be a deterrent. We've seen squatting do a lot of different things here in Missouri. Yeah. We've in St. Louis in particular, we've had people who've started squatting in people's front yards. We actually oh, yeah. had a bunch of them who did it at City Hall here in St. Louis, and the mayor was okay yeah. with it for a really long time. What do you weird. think has it, it's very weird, but welcome to St. Louis. We got a lot of weird <laughs> here, man. But feel free. I, I understand why and, you're in Miami. And I'm in Florida telling you're weird. Yeah, I, exactly. I started to say, if you ever want to discover some weird Midwestern stuff, come to town. We'd love to have you here. Uh, <laughs> what do you think has really made this such a front page issue all across the country? Because I hear this story all the time. So I think that it has become a problem in certain metro areas, and that's just made the the news and therefore the the consciousness of the of the nation. Uh, and in terms of the Florida law, we I don't know that we really have a squatting problem, but uh, that doesn't mean you shouldn't try to prevent some problem from popping up. And so that's sort of been the mo of the DeSantis administration ever since uh, he took office. Uh, to kind of identify things that could be a problem and do something about it legally before it became a problem. This seems to be one of those things. And kind of uncharacteristically so, uh, this law passed the state legislature unanimously. Wow. Well, it... uh, So that means bipartisanly as well. <laughs> um, and so that that is and, and look, the, the Ron DeSantis is not known for reaching consensus consensus with Democrats often on things. Um, so uh, the fact that this was a, a unanimously approved bill in both uh, chambers of the state legislature, that is probably newsworthy, newsworthy more than anything. Well, it makes it easier to do consensus building when you're not running for president anymore. Yeah, well, perhaps that. I mean, he is, you know, he's term limited on gun running for governor. He's not running for president. So, yeah, it, it makes it a little bit easier. So this goes into effect July 1st, correct? I believe so. Yes. OK, that's that's when I thought that we were uh, seeing this happen. It makes sense that Florida would be a place where this would be top of mind. And I say that because you have so many people who snowbird Florida and they may right. have a place that would sit open for a month or so especially a condo type building. So it well, would I think I I imagine it would be harder to uh to squat in a condo building cuz you have to get through the front door and those are usually well guarded. Um but That's a good uh, point. But but a freestanding home that stays empty uh, for 6 months out of the year or 5 months whatever the the you know the the, the legal thing is for making sure you keep your Florida residence. I don't I forget, but uh, um, you know that, yeah, that would become ripe for it. And uh, if uh, you yeah, imagine you're a senior citizen and you're arriving in Florida, uh, you know, at the end of the year where it's the weather changes up North and you get there and there's, you know, some dude and, and a, <laughs> you know, living in your place, that's uh that would be disconcerting. Like I said, I, I, I'm not aware that it's a widespread problem here, but uh, it was cause enough that we've seen this happening around the country uh, that the uh, the governor and the legislature wanted to do something proactive. Well, we appreciate you keeping an eye on it. And I think the bigger story may be, like you said, it was unanimous. That that may be the biggest story of all. It doesn't really matter what the legislation was. It's a fact that they all voted for it. Exactly. That's Evan Brown. We appreciate you spending some time with us today, man. Have a great April Fool's. You too. Take care. It's always good to talk to somebody who's out there on the forefront of an issue. And I wonder, to his point, how big of an issue this really is. I mean, a lot of times, especially in a, a political avenue, and maybe that's why Steve Moore's not with us. He's on TV he's right actually now. on TV that's right exactly now. That's exactly why he's that's, not with that's us. That's exactly why he's not talking <laughs> to us. Uh, it's like, where's Steve Moore? Oh, he's on the TV screen right behind Ryan right now. Yeah, let's just that's, pull that up and pretend it. we're talking. Hey. Anytime uh, <laughs> just one of their anchors asks a question, we'll pull it down and ask our question. Oh, and here's what I meant to ask yeah. Steve, and here's his answer. <laughs> so we'll go from there. I, it, it, a lot of times, politicians find solutions for problems that aren't there yet. And it's like, well, 
this is a little bit of thing, but I think I can get some headlines, right? Well, so I'm I'm going to come up and I'm going to make this a really big deal and I'm going to get some headlines for it which is going to help me especially during an election year but I I just thought it was interesting that they all agreed. Yeah, well, I mean if you stop and think about it, somebody comes to their property, it's their property. Right. And there's somebody on there saying, "No, this isn't your property." And then to reclaim what was already yours and what is already yours, you have to go through all of these extensive court proceedings before you can do that. And in the process, these people know they're going to lose, so they're just trashing your stuff until you know, they're kicked out and finally removed. I widespread, I wouldn't I don't know how widespread of an issue it is, but That's to the, the person point. but to the person that owns that piece of property, this is a huge problem. Oh, agreed. Completely agreed. For the people who are affected by this, this is huge. And in Florida, it gives them a way out. I mean, I'm seeing these stories in New York where they've yeah, taken the other side of it. There was that 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 big story out of New York was from a couple of weeks ago and, and that one did make headlines. So I don't know if that's what spurred this or if it was already moving. But the squatters' rights things in the past, the reason that they've ever existed, because these are pretty old laws, right? Is that you'd have you'd have properties that somebody would leave or die, and nobody would even know, right? And so somebody would move in to a property that had been completely abandoned and live there for a long time, and then they'd say, "Oh, well, you don't actually own this, but we prefer somebody to be living in abandoned properties, so we're going to create squatters' rights, essentially." Right. But it's become an issue recently because states, especially in areas like he's talking about deep blue areas, typically downtown areas, it's become an issue because nobody's enforcing laws. Right. So, so somebody moves into a property that maybe you, especially Florida is a very good example of this. People snowbird, people go down there for half the year. They go down there for just parts a year. And, you show up at a property that somebody's been in for it's supposed to be like seven years before those those rights take place but it'll be a few months at this point right and then you got to go through all of the court problems when the police should just show up like in florida and go you don't live here you're kicked out now in fact we need to press charges against you for trespassing yeah that's all that needed to happen yes Sh yeah show me your lease that's it no lease get out, out you go yeah because well, squatters rights are supposed to take place over many years before yeah. they actually like enforce them. And I, I think Evan's point is is well taken. It's become a big story. However, it's not like you went to the grocery store and somebody moved in while you were out. Right. Or you went to Japan for a week and then somebody moved in while you were on vacation. Typically the house has been empty for a month or so. The only caveat to that, I think is they're getting people who are signing leases for apartments or leases for homes that someone else is doing a lease on your house mm -hmm. and you don't know it. And then all of a sudden these people are moving in at this time and that's when they're getting into some of those that are more short-term, quicker turnaround, right? Normally, from what I've seen on these stories, people have been gone for a while and they're not there for a month or a quarter or six months, something like that. And that's when somebody moves in. But to Brad's point, if it's you, that's a big, hairy deal, man. That is that is something that is super important to you and something that needs to be addressed. We had a deal with um, the recorder of deeds in St. Charles sent out a note. And this is probably a, a it's similar but different. Uh, people stealing your title. And that has become a bigger deal around the country that you're seeing people that are going in and they're stealing the title to your home and they're getting mortgages on your house and you don't even know what's going on. I know you hear commercials on that from time to time, but it, it's a legit thing that's huh. actually happening. So you need to be diligent about just protecting yourself and making sure that you're taking those common sense things to make sure. So if you have a place that you're not going to be at for a while, it's good to maybe have somebody house sit. Uh, when my son was down in Phoenix for a while, there were all of these um, job ads asking people to house sit down in Arizona, especially down in areas around Scottsdale and things like that. And all they wanted you to do was basically live on the property. And a lot of them had like pool houses or little separate areas. And that's where they really wanted you to live. But they wanted you, you had access to the big house, so to speak. 
and you would go in and take care of things that were there. But that was the whole purpose, was to keep people from coming in and taking over your house while you weren't there. I mean, because in Arizona, during the summer, it gets pretty hot. Yeah. So they aren't going to be using that place, but they didn't want someone else to come in and make use of it, trash it, turning it into a drug house or, or what have you. You had a lot of those kind of things that kind of happen as well. I didn't think that we were going to get to this in this entire show, but you gave me a great segue. Another thing taking place in Florida on July 1st. Uh-oh. I think it's the same date as the squatters ride things up. Uh, a brand new law that DeSantis has signed to improve the quality of life of Floridians. Uh-oh. He has signed a bill into law that will allow for the sale of giant bottles of wine. <laughs> I kid you not. This, this is, is not House Bill 583. Concerned. It is a real law that he says, uh, <clears throat> I had the legislature push this through because I wanted the quality of life of Floridians to go up. If they can buy giant bottles of wine elsewhere, then they should be able to buy them here. And <laughs> in, in the past, you could only uh, sell a bottle of wine in Florida up to one gallon. One gallon. So now you can sell any quantity bottle you want. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> so that'll go into effect here soon, too. Wait, that's a legit story. That's yeah. not oh, yeah, April for Fool's. Sure. It's a real story. <laughs> I, and I watched the presser for it the other day. He had this gigantic bottle of wine sitting on the desk next to him. If yeah. we were playing B or not B, I would tell you that was that was definitely a Babylon B story. <laughs> that definitely <laughs> sounds that way. No, it's real. Hey, it's Mike Elam sitting in for Annie Fry today. Obviously, the normal cast of characters is still here. We appreciate the fact that you're joining us on this April Fool's Day. Hope it's going well for you. And I'm not going to talk about the bad weather that could be coming because Brad keeps giving me this nasty look. We'll let you know if the bad weather sets exactly. in. We will give you ample warnings. Dave Murray is here keeping an eye on his little radar. In the meantime, it actually is pretty nice outside. So hope you're enjoying your Monday. The start of your week is going well. By the way, you just started a brand new quarter today oh lord we'll see what holds for us hey if you haven't weighed in the youtube live chat poll today since it is a new quarter what do you believe is going to happen in regards to the economy this year will the day improve be worsen or see stay the same weigh in let us know we'll talk about that poll a little bit later on on st louis's home for conservative talk 97.1 fm talk like when i close my eyes This is the Annie Fry Show. Follow Annie on Twitter at Annie Fry Show. Mike Carter here of Carter Law Offices. You know, as an attorney, I make my way across the great state of Missouri on a pretty regular basis. And from the rivers to the lakes and the Ozark Mountains, it's really just a pleasure to travel across the great state of Missouri. And, you know, not to mention, we have the best sports team and the best cities and the friendliest small towns in America, it seems like. And Carter Law Offices wants to make sure Missouri's story gets out far and wide about our excellent business climate, our exceptional workforce. You'll hear more from me soon, Mike Carter. Visit MikeCarter.com to see Mike's interviews with all of Missouri's elected leaders. Mike Mike Carter here of Carter Law Offices. You know, as an attorney, I make my way across the great state of Missouri on a pretty regular basis. And from the rivers to the lakes and the Ozark Mountains and the richest farmland around, it's really just a pleasure to travel across the great state of Missouri. And, you know, not to mention, we have the best sports team and the best cities and the friendliest small towns in America, it seems like. And Carter Law Offices wants to make sure Missouri's story gets out far and wide about our excellent business climate, our exceptional workforce. You'll hear more from me soon, Mike Carter. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. I was having a lot of sinus infections. My sinuses were clogged, pressure, headaches. Linda suffered for years with chronic sinus infections. You don't feel like doing anything. When, when you feel like your head is completely clogged, all you want to do is just lay down and sleep. And the pressure uh, is just not fun. Always walking around with a headache. Now her issues are gone. How? A minimally invasive procedure done in the office of St. Louis Sinus Centers called balloon sinuplasty. I really did not know what it was like to feel like you're really breathing and not being so clogged up. I would do it again in a heartbeat and I would definitely recommend it for someone else. Do you suffer with chronic sinus infections? Facial pain, pressure, congestion. Find out if balloon sinuplasty is the solution for you. Set an appointment today with St. Louis Sinus Centers. Call 314-332-2885. 314-332-2885. That's 314-332-2885. 
332-2885. Sick of those annoying ads slowing you down online? Introducing i3 Broadband's 100% fiber optic network with advanced whole home Wi-Fi. With speeds up to 8 gigabits, buffering is so yesterday. Our rock-solid connection keeps you streaming, gaming, and browsing without a hitch thanks to our ad-blocking feature. No contracts, no hidden fees, just pure internet bliss. And we've got a no-risk 30-day money-back guarantee. Dial 877-976-0711 or swing by i3broadband.com slash STL. We're local, reliable, and committed to St. Louis. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely on advertisements. If you've been injured in a truck accident, you need the best. Under Law. Let us make your case our cause. Truck accident? Call Under Law for a free review at 314 or 618 9 million. We're talking about the economy today in the poll. We want to know if you believe that the economy will get better this year? Will it get worse this year? Or will it stay about the same? We'll give you the results of that poll at the end of the show today. That's the Annie Fry YouTube live chat poll. Let us know what you think. It is 145. Now, this time check is sponsored by Jerry Kelly Heating and Air Conditioning. It's time for a $98 AC tune-up. Don't miss the Mark Cox Morning Show Spring Bourbon Fling at Clayton Winehouse. Join me and Kim April 18th from 5.30 to 8. We'll sample New Riff, Old Dominic, Oak and Eden, and more. Get your tickets now before they're gone at 971talk.com slash events. This is the Annie Fry Show. Follow Annie on Twitter at Annie Fry Show. It's Mike Elam sitting in for Annie Fry today. St. Louis is home for conservative talk and 97.1 FM talk. Mr. Wiggins is back from Japan. You know, I have never been to Japan. Well, most people haven't. Uh, well, there's a lot of Japanese who have been. But um, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> there are quite a few Japanese people who have been to Japan. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. There's, it's like I met they, a whole bunch of them. It's like they live there or yes. something. You know, there's there's kind of that going on. I have not been on long trips like that. Like my dad, when I was younger, in 1977, he went with 40 pastors from Arkansas to do a mission trip of 40 days in New Zealand. And after explaining that flight and what that was like, now this was 77, Ooh. it hasn't gotten shorter. So uh, it, it's one of those kind of things where I look at those type of trips and I'm like, I don't know that I want to be in a plane for 14 hours. How long was the flight to Japan? Okay, we flew from here to L.A. on, so I was here last Tuesday, not even last Tuesday, last last Tuesday. I was here that night we flew out from St. Louis to L.A. Okay. We stayed the night in L.A., so that made the overall flight feel a little shorter because then from L.A. to Tokyo was about 11 hours. So it's like four hours from here to L.A., right? Roughly. Okay. So you do those four hours, you sleep, mm -hmm. then you hop on the plane, and you fly for 11 hours mm -hmm. to Tokyo. Tokyo. Yeah, okay. and so that, that wasn't terrible. Uh, we also upgraded our seats a little bit because we found a discount airline that gives you uh, some seat room that you can lay back and stuff and sleep okay. a little bit. Who did you fly? Zip Air. Zip they, Air. They only fly Pacific flights. Okay. That's all they do. And they're super discount airline. But they do offer a few upgrades that are not considered first class but are good enough for us to feel like we were in luxury. <laughs> so sort of a Pacific... Um, Frontier Airlines type thing. Yeah, I think they only fly from L.A., San Francisco, and Seattle or something like that, and mainly just to Tokyo, although oh. from Tokyo they also fly to other, like Honolulu, and they, okay. they're just Pacific. And, uh, man, it, it, it's so interesting in Japan. They get a reputation in Japan for being very technologically advanced. Yes. And they are, but only out of necessity for their infrastructure. Because they have to build things to be incredibly well run for that society to function at all. Because there are so many people everywhere you go. But they technologically really are not that ahead. Like you're not hearing about a lot of major inventions coming out of Japan. Um, on a lot of things, they're actually behind us. Like Wi-Fi, they just don't really have it. And they need it. They need more of it. Really? And they're just slow to adopt it. Yeah. Um, and... 
the weird thing, and my friends who were there said even before COVID, it was even worse. Now, after COVID, it's changed a little bit. But even while I was there, most places, especially if you got a little bit, just a little bit outside of Tokyo, only cash. They, really? w- they would not accept cards. They would only take yen in cash. And I was so surprised about it. You'd, you'd figure this would be like a full cashless society. Yeah, I mean, that's point. kind of what we're led to believe. No, and they're, they're just very slow to adopt new anything. And that includes technology. The reason that they do adopt things and sometimes very quickly is out of pure necessity. Okay. Because they have got to move fast to keep up with the population and the needs of people. And just, you can, you can imagine, that, that is the densest populated city in the world. Just keeping up with the water and the right. the way transportation has to move and garbage and just that kind of stuff. You know, they really are efficient. I mean, these are people who work hard, the Japanese do. Were you only in Tokyo, or did you go other places? So the funny thing about Tokyo is that you can travel pretty far outside of Tokyo and still be in Tokyo. <laughs> uh, it's like L.A. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, and you were talking about mission trips. That's actually something I did not get to talk about much. We attended, so it was Palm Sunday when we were there. Okay. We attended a Japanese church with some friends of mine. Now, they're, my buddy's American, but his wife is Japanese, which is why they split time between here and there. Makes sense. So <clears throat> while we were there, we thought they went to church on their base because he works on a military base. They don't. They actually go into Japan so that they can be a part of Japanese church culture in Japan because they're essentially, I mean, they're not missionaries, but they're Christians. Therefore, they're on mission, you know, the well, Great isn't, Commission. Isn't Japan mainly a Buddhist country? Uh, no, it's Shinto. Bless you. (laughs) Um, So Japan, though, is one of the least Christian nations in the world. Really? Less than 1% of the population is Christian. And I got a little bit of a crash course on the history of why that's happened. And it's interesting because um, missionaries were not allowed, outsiders at all, were not allowed into the country, period, until Commodore Perry opened up, he was an American naval officer, right. opened up the country to outsiders in 1843, I think, by basically driving a, a warship over and pointing cannons at them and saying, you need to open up. Wow. Because the trade routes are getting backed up by you not being open. And <clears throat> they, actually, they actually view Commodore Perry as, as a positive now okay. because they realize how much they needed to open up at that time. So um, since then, there's been many, many waves of missionaries, and there have been some, some pretty like big deaths of missionaries. They've killed off missionaries. Um, but there have been waves, <clears throat> and, and what, what was explained to me was that each one has come with something to offer to say, look, we, we want to offer you um, more military capability, and we want to offer you the opportunity to know Jesus Christ, basically. And, and I don't know if I'll it give was you, presented I'll give you that way. Jesus. Yeah, but then... The, Holy, it, isn't that exactly what Obama complained about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but there would be opportunities for missionaries to come in, and later they said they, they would bring technology or economic opportunity, just different things that Japan maybe w- didn't have that outsiders had. And a lot of it was Westerners or Christian nations doing it. And they'd say, well, we, we have this and, you know, you don't have to accept our religion. They weren't pushing it. But, you know, here is an opportunity for you to know the gospel. And they would say yes to the economics, no to Jesus, <laughs> like every time. And so they have maintained this Shinto-ish kind of culture that in my observation, and this is just me being there for a week and talking to my friends, uh, we we visited some of the temples and things because they're beautiful. Yeah. And we we observed that people there seem to be, I don't want to say religionless, but it's very much like almost like they 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 believe in luck. Really? I would say more than anything. They would they do things kind of to increase good harmony and luck and things like that. Because it's there's not really a, a monotheistic God that they're praying to. It's more like they want to be like in harmony with the universe and they want to have good blessings, but there's not any like deity that they're praying to. And that's kind of pervaded culture from what I've seen. 
to be that it, it it's just kind of like a it's there it's in the background but nobody's going all in <laughs> right you know what i mean so it's a very very unique culture in that it's still very very peaceful though you know it's it's a very peaceful culture and very very um polite when you have that many people living together you're either going to have sort of a um wild west type mentality or you're going to have that because people have to learn to either get along or they're just going to shoot each other in the streets and what's amazing is that japan seems to have been as far as i could tell the only nation on earth that has been able to do what they've done to have the amount of people that they have and still be in peace and i mean they really are kind of they they kind of are um safe everything's safe you can go anywhere you want you don't have to worry about crime you don't have to worry about any of that stuff there which is got to be one of the only places in the world that's like that my it's, guess is they have some pretty stringent law enforcement that if you do step out of line the penalties are pretty tough yes but it's more social enforcement it's really? just they, they have a phrase there that says the nail that sticks out gets hammered wow so if you are doing something different than everybody else you are basically pushed back in line by society. Wow. Now, they do have an extremely high, speaking to the spiritual side of things, they do have a very, very high suicide rate. Because they don't have much to believe in. They don't, um, they, they bottle all that stuff up. They, the politeness is there. It's very safe. But if you're depressed, you are not allowed to show that. It's very surface. And so they actually had to put, this is brand new since uh, my buddy's been there, it's in the last few months, they've actually had to put train gates up. Because so many people? people would just throw themselves in front of the trains. Really? Uh, so, you know, there's, there's a, there's a, it's a very complex culture, of course, just like any other. But gosh, is it different. I mean, it is so different than here. And that was one of the things I was looking forward to was just seeing how do they function, what are the people like. And they do a lot of things very, very well. And there's other things that I think, you know, uh, we do better, obviously. Like, that's probably any society. We do some things better. They do, you know. The technology is actually very... Uh, surprising to me because after World War II and rebuilding Japan, I, I had always been led to believe kind of what you just talked about, that they were really on the forefront of technology and they were leading the way and bullet trains and all the other things that you hear about. But uh, just from a broadband perspective, being <laughs> that that's what I do every day, yeah. I would expect that they would have some pretty amazing Wi-Fi. But I guess it stands to reason. Hey, we are going to talk to Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe. You may have heard he's running for governor. I know. That's what we're here to break news. Uh, so we're going to talk to him on the other side. It's Mike Elam in for Annie Fry on 97.1 FM Talk. What's your favorite four-letter word? Chances are you've said it more than a few times dealing with this crazy world we live in. But at Compass Retirement Solutions, our four-letter word of choice is hope. Hope for a better tomorrow and hope that your retirement plans don't take a back seat. You've watched inflation soar, and maybe your retirement future feels a little uncertain right now. But all hope is not lost. Find out exactly how much risk you're still taking with your investments. Find out how you may be able to save big on taxes. And find out how having a written retirement plan just might give you the hope you've been looking for. Call today to set up a meeting. 314-373-1598. That's 314 314- 373-1598. Compass Retirement Solutions. 314-373-1598. Firm offers insurance services but does not provide tax advice. Investments and services offered through Compass Retirement Group, a registered investment advisory firm in Missouri and Illinois. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Our $79 garage door tune-up extended through April. Is your garage door old and whining for attention? Overhead Door Company of St. Louis will make it all better. They'll perform their full 26-task garage door tune-up for just $79, extended through April. That's just $79 for up to three garage doors and openers. You need this done once a year, so why not now? And for just $79, schedule now at OverheadDoorStLouis.com. 
traffic law counselors is where we go when the police has to lose. Go to 45bucks.com. This is Mike Carter, founder of 45bucks.com, or as you know it, traffic law counselors. And right now around tax time, we know folks are taking care of issues that they may have been putting off for a while. Maybe a driving while suspended or a warrant, things that you may have been worrying about for a little while. And we specialize in keeping folks' records clean. They come to us on a Monday, they can't drive, and by the end of that week on a Friday, we've got them back in the driver's seat driving legally. And that's very gratifying. And God forbid you're wrestling with something like a DWI, you can go to DWISTL.com. We've got 10 paralegals and attorneys that are working on those cases nonstop and depositions, trials, hearings, and we can put that to work for you as well. In fact, it's the enduring success of traffic law counselors that has enabled us to be the preeminent DWI attorneys in St. Louis at DWISTL.com. So now you know, if you have a traffic matter, it's 45bucks.com. If you've got a DWI issue, it's DWISTL.com. Choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. AMCO presents Bet You Didn't Know. Bet you didn't know that your car's transmission is made up of 800 pieces. Also, bet you didn't know that AMCO's fixed over 40 million transmissions and that AMCO offers a nationwide warranty. AMCO offers easy payment plan options for most any credit situation, so you can fix it fast and pay it off slow at AMCO. That's AMCO, double A, MCO. KFTK FM Florissant from the Under Law Injury Lawyers Get Gym.com Studio 971 FM Talk. Always live on the free Odyssey app. The White House firing back at critics of a weekend proclamation. Only Brady, Fox News. The administration accusing Republican lawmakers of being dishonest. House Speaker Mike Johnson says President Biden betrayed the central tenet of Easter by proclaiming Sunday Transgender Day of Visibility, a day of awareness started several years ago and marked annually by President Biden. And it's not surprising, right? It is actually unsurprising that politicians are seeking to divide and weaken our country with cruel, hateful, and dishonest rhetoric. White House Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre's is trans Gender Day of Visibility is always celebrated on March 31st and simply coincided this year with Easter. Fox's Jared Halpern at the White House. No confirmation from the U.S. or Israel about a reported Israeli airstrike in Syria, killing a senior Iranian general. State media in Iran and Syria say several other people were also killed in a consular building next to the Iranian embassy in Damascus, where a large picture hangs outside of a top Iranian general killed by the U.S. in 2020. A car rams a gate at an FBI office outside Atlanta. The driver now in custody after investigators say he tried to get inside. No injuries reported. The Washington, D.C. mayor reportedly considering a plan to hold parents accountable if their children miss too many days of school. This amid a rise in juvenile crime, including a murder with three young suspects. Three girls between 12 and 13 years old allegedly beat a disabled 64-year-old man to death after chasing him down an alley. Investigators say the girls allegedly stomped Reggie Brown to death, and all three have long-standing truancy issues. The judge in the case noting one of the suspects had not attended a single day of class this year. Fox's Mike Emanuel in D.C. A superintendent's report last fall said 60% of D.C. high school students were chronically absent last school year. America is listening to Fox News. Waiting on a tax return? Hopefully it ends up in your hands. Fraudulent tax returns due to identity theft increased by 30% in 2023. If you're in a bind this tax season, LifeLock can help. Our U.S.-based restoration specialists are experts dedicated to helping solve your identity theft issues. And all LifeLock plans are backed by the Million Dollar Protection Package. So we'll reimburse you up to the limits of your plan if you lose money due to identity theft. Help protect your information this tax season with LifeLock. Save up to 25% your first year with promo code NEWS at LifeLock.com. Life insurance. Why are you putting it off? Can't afford it? Too much hassle? Think you don't need it? There's lots of excuses for putting off life insurance. But if you weren't there, who would pay the mortgage and other bills? With Ethos, you could be covered in 10 minutes and boom, family protected. Ethos, fast and easy online term life insurance. Up to $2 million in coverage with no medical exam. Some policies as low as a dollar a day. Answer a few health questions and get your free quote at getethos.com. That's getethos.com. 
Air Comfort Service, heating, cooling, and insulation, weather. It's a springtime atmosphere this afternoon with a changeable sky, and we're watching for scattered showers and thunderstorms, 75 for the high. Tonight, periods of rain and storms. Some of them could be on the strong side, especially during the evening before sunset. Windy in 48. Tuesday, a couple of showers around in the morning. Otherwise, mostly cloudy, windy, 55 on Tuesday, but temperatures drop into the 40s on Tuesday afternoon. This is 97.1 FM Talk, Chief Meteorologist Dave Murray. This is a special alert to all Americans who own a vehicle with less than 200,000 miles with an auto warranty about to expire or with no warranty coverage at all. Due to a decline in the economy, CarShield is announcing a low-cost month-to-month vehicle protection plan that is now available to the public to save any driver out-of-pocket expenses on future auto repairs. Call now to find out how you can pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. Yes, you heard that correctly. Pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. An open phone line has been established for all drivers to call for a free quick quote. Call 800 800- 652-5241 now. Drivers who are covered will not have to pay for covered repairs again. This protection plan is at an all-time low. Additionally, drivers who activate this vehicle protection today will also receive free roadside assistance, free towing, and car rental options at no additional cost. Call us for your free quick quote today. 800-652-5241. That's 800-652-5241. What do you have to lose? Call 800-652-5241. Again, 800-652-5241. Just imagine being walked all over for 36 years. Who would do that? The great customers of Reinhold Flooring, that's who. For over three and a half decades, Reinhold Flooring has been the mecca for carpet, hardwood, vinyl, laminate, and area rugs. Reinhold Flooring is customer-driven with a focus on top quality products and installations from the best team in the business. So come on in and walk all over your next flooring at Reinhold Flooring. Visit them at 5429 Telegraph Road in St. Louis or online at reinholdflooring.com. Hi, I'm Bob Kershaw with Retirement Advisory Group. Are you worried about market volatility in this election year? Are you concerned your money won't last you through retirement? Hi, I'm Tammy Kershaw, and as a family-owned business, we are committed to protecting your retirement, whether you're nearing retirement or already retired. We have a lot of folks that aren't aware of all the new investment choices that are available, which give you growth and protection from losses at the same time. Are you aware of all the fees that you are currently paying? We can show you how to avoid those fees. So come in now for your free retirement review and get a second opinion on your retirement plan. And just for coming in, you'll get a copy of our latest edition book, Your Key to a Worry-Free Retirement. Let us show you how to retire with confidence. We are proud to say we haven't lost a penny of our clients' money in 38 years, and we won't lose a penny of yours either. Let our family help your family. Call us now at 314-993-9494 or go online to retirementkey.com. That's retirementkey.com. When you're trying to find quality candidates, all the searching, screening, and interviewing can become a job itself. You need Indeed, the all-in-one platform that makes it easy to interview, screen, and hire quality people. Visit Indeed.com slash credit. You found 97.1 FM Talk, where we ask questions, even when the legacy media won't. Especially when the legacy media won't. St. Louis is home for conservative talk. 97.1 FM Talk. The Annie Fry Show YouTube live chat poll of the day is sponsored by Ruler Foods. Low prices, no coupons. Ruler Foods. That is exactly what I needed to hear. Thank God someone here knows what they're talking about. That's us. That's right. Gotta love this American ride. All right, you need to take the time and get the full picture. I love the ladies. I mean, they rev my engine, but they don't belong in the newsroom. It is Anchor Man, not Anchor Lady. What do you want from me? I'm not a Mary the sweetheart. Good to say, kid. Keep your voice down. Your father's listening to the radio. I'm not a Mary the sweetheart. This is the Annie Fry Show. It's Mike Keelum sitting in for Annie Fry today on St. Louis's home for conservative talk. Just kind of looking at uh, stories that are breaking right now. There's a guy who rammed his car into the FBI office in Atlanta 
and uh, ran into the barrier. And Brad and I were just talking about the fact of that barrier did exactly what yeah. it was supposed to do, yeah. man. That barrier was a barricade and prevented him from entering. <laughs> you hit that and your car stops, bam, right there. That is that is exactly where it is. Hey, we want to know what your opinion is on our YouTube live chat poll today. Um, what do you believe will happen in regards to the economy this year? Will it A, improve, B, worsen, or C, stay the same? I have a pretty good idea, I think, of where most people are going to come down, but we will talk about that a little bit later on this hour. Uh, Very honored to be joined right now by Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe, who is joining us on the phone. Lieutenant Governor, how are you, sir? Fine, buddy. Thanks for having me on today. You know, you do I get to, do I get to answer that question? By uh, the way, you feel free to go ahead and weigh in. <laughs> well, I think everybody's seen under Biden economy. We're just getting our brains beat out in this inflation. It's just been crazy what we've seen uh, happen in the last three and a half years. Uh, Donald Trump obviously had a much better idea as a business person on how to make the economy work and how to keep everything from groceries to gas at a more affordable rate. So. Um, the economy is slowing, but there's a lot of liquidity in the market. Uh, but interest rates are hurting us, and high prices are hurting people. The dollar, the average Missourian and the average person across this country, their dollars just aren't going as far with these high inflation costs. You know, I, I keep being told by this administration that things are getting better. And I'm like, huh. really? Because well, every, well, every time that I go to a grocery store or fill up my car, it seems to be the to know opposite. Day of the week it is. They're lucky to know what day of the week it is. So this is, this I, is you know, I don't want to pick on them too much. But, um, yeah, I, I, I don't think if you ask the average person at three forty nine a gallon or price of milk, price of eggs, you name it, lumber, materials, uh, just about everything you see. And then when you put that on top, if you're building a house, remodeling a house, repairing a deck that's fallen off the back of your house, and you have to go get a, a you know a home loan or a mortgage loan uh, for home improvement. It's you're seeing the rate height jump. So it's all it's it's all around, and uh, we certainly need a change in administration to uh, get this country figured out. And I'm looking forward to that happening uh, with Donald Trump in November. Well, uh, hopefully that is going to happen. But we're also looking for a potential change in Missouri. Obviously, we're going to have a new governor. How is your campaign going for uh, looking to take over that seat? Well, thank you for asking. Um, As you think, most people know if they follow me, I'm I'm originally from St. Louis, so a lot of St. Louis connections there. We travel the state extensively, my wife and our team and I, all 114 counties plus the city of St. Louis. The campaign's going very well. Uh, We just had three weeks of traveling from one corner of the state to the other with receptions and folks having us into their home in various places that have gone over very, very well. Uh, We just received our 20th endorsement, Mike, I think, you know, in the last couple of weeks. uh, The 19th endorsement, by the way, was Missouri Farm Bureau, one of the, if not the largest member organizations uh, in the state. Everything from Fraternal Order Police to the State Troopers Association to Missouri Chamber, just about every business and ag group can you you talk to is going to tell you they think that I have the right recipe to move the state forward. And uh, so we've had great reception. Our fundraising numbers are going to be strong, likely the strongest any candidate has ever produced in the first quarter of a gubernatorial primary. We'll we'll announce those in a a few weeks. So um, the reception is going well. It's humbling, uh, but we know it's a battle and we're going to fight tough every day to uh, make sure we win the hearts and minds of Missourians and let them know that uh, our way to kind of move forward and do businessman as a 20 or 35 year small businessman is is really the right recipe for the state. Well, you do know that as a small business owner, if you're having any crime that is happening at your business, uh, the mayor of St. Louis says that you, as the small business owner, need to do a better job of controlling that crime. <laughs> does does that make any sense to you at all? I thought it was a misprint when I first read it. I'm like, that that can't be right. She was early uh, on her you know, April Fool's joke, is, is we, what I'm that, guessing. That's the, Thank you for explaining that. Now something <laughs> makes sense. Um, you know, I join other small businesses in saying we're we're investing in the state and in communities. We're we're supplying jobs for Missourians to take a paycheck home to their families, to somehow insinuate that the business owner is responsible for this instead of the criminals. That's absolutely crazy. We have to stop coddling criminals. It's not the business owner, for goodness sakes, fault. It's not the poor person who works in that business's fault either. 
It's the criminals. We have to crack down on crime. And you asked how the governor's race is going to go. I'm telling you right now, should I be fortunate enough to put my hand on the Bible, the very first thing we're going to do is implement our day one crime plan. We are going to be the toughest on criminals in the whole state here in Missouri. We are going to be friendliest to our law enforcement to make sure they have the resources they need, back the prosecutors to get this done, and not, for goodness sakes, be blaming businesses for a crime problem. It's just it's beyond crazy. I don't know if you had the opportunity to see the story of what happened last Wednesday at East West Gateway with County Executive Steve Elman and Mayor Tashara Jones and how they got into it over this crime task force uh, that was going on down there. But what what County Executive Elman was basically trying to say in one of the amendments is you put together this task force, but you've only given law enforcement a third of the seats on this board. And I think we can all agree the whole reason for this task force to begin with was to combat violent crime, not crime, violent crime. And it happened after a school shooting in South St. Louis City, and the mayor asked for help. So the county executive was just trying to say, look, this is a law enforcement issue, first and foremost. If you are bleeding, the first rule is stop the bleeding. Then you go about fixing the wound and and going from there. But if I can't keep you alive, you're going to bleed out, and it's going to be a different problem at that point. That's what he was trying to bring up. And she says, no, we need to have social workers have a seat at the table just as much as law enforcement. And I thought, man, this makes no sense to me. Yeah, you have to triage the wound first, to your point. You have to stop the bleeding. You have to get everything to slow down to the point where you can get to step two. Step one has to be to crack down on these folks. And, um, you know, the mayor is from the same North St. Louis City neighborhood I'm from. And I got news for you. You get some social workers going and walking, uh, knocking on the door, some of those folks. Um, that reception is not going to go well. <laughs> so <laughs> you're going to need to have what people we train law enforcement for in this in this country and in this state. County Executive Elman knows it best. His folks over in um, St. Charles County, where you're from, they get the backing from the prosecutors. The police have the backing. They understand what it takes to crack down on crime. And I applaud him for offering to help with St. Louis or St. Louis County or the region uh, to figure out a way to stop the bleeding on this crime problem. That has to be step number one. And um, Steve Elman has it right on this case. I would just like to see them buy into it a little bit more and understanding, look, it comes with backing your law enforcement first and foremost. And I think Brad Chris bill uh, of trying to move control of the police department to the state is a good first step. And I, I hope that makes it all the way through. And I'm sure the governor will support that if we get there. But if we're not going to get the support that the law enforcement community needs from the current administration in the city, I don't know another way to actually move this through. Do you? Well, Mike, what what's what they're doing is not working. And so why do you want to, you know, that's the definition of insanity. Let's keep trying the same way again and see if we get different results. Yeah. We have to try something different. Representative Chris has a great bill. Uh, St. Louis Police Department and the men and ladies, our heroes who work for those departments, very much believe that that model will work. As you mentioned, it's headed over to the Senate now. So trying to do something different is what has to happen when they're not taking care of the problem themselves. And that's the same point that Steve Elman had, is that if you want help, let us help you. But you have to listen to our ideas to try to get things moving and uh, St. Louis is an absolutely fantastic area. As I mentioned, born and raised there, worked for the Sinclair administration uh, down in South County for years and years. Dave was a cop. Everybody knows that. Most people that worked in that dealership were police officers. And the world has changed from when I moved out of the city several years ago and the population it is to the population it is now. We have to stop the shrinking population in the city because it is a great place. I mean, we have Bush Stadium. We have the new soccer park we have the geospatial being built just down by the convention center there's so many cool things going on in the inner city core of st louis we've got to preserve that for generations to come and get it back to the way i remember as a kid walking around taking the bus to those venues literally sometimes hitchhiking to my mother's dismay when she found out (laughs) uh, but was a safer place and it was fun to be there and we don't need these headlines on the front page of any New York Times or any East or West Coast uh, you know, newspaper talking about the crime problems in St. Louis because it affects the entire state. 
we have to get this straightened out. We have to back the men and ladies in blue, and we have to move forward in getting St. Louis and the region back to the great place we all know it can be. We're talking with Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe, who is a Republican candidate for Missouri governor. You know, uh, you talked about traveling the state and all the different places you've been. It seems like every time I talk to you, you've got yet another endorsement. So congratulations on your 20th now. But but as you're talking to folks, obviously, you're not just in the cities. You're not just in Kansas City and Columbia and St. Louis, but you're hitting these rural parts of Missouri. Are you seeing different issues come up at different parts of the state, or is it pretty much the same thing everywhere you go? Well, I'll tell you the number one thing is what we've been talking about. It doesn't matter if I go to a town of 112 people or if I'm in a town with 512,000 people. Crime is the number one issue that everybody wants to talk about. And when you spin off of crime, the subset of that conversation is illegal immigration, how it's really affecting our country and our state. You know, Missouri has 77,000 illegal immigrants living in it now, and there's research out there that suggests in just one year, in 2023, we spent over $460 million on that. Those, that's money we could have spent on our veterans, our teachers, or giving tax dollars back to Missourians. Uh, the amount of drugs that are coming up with those, that illegal immigration is absolutely insane. We have to shut that border down. That's one of our big pieces of crime that we got to get under control. But that's what's on Missourians' mind, is they want, they want to be safe. Even if they don't live in St. Louis or Kansas City, when they go to a Chiefs game, they go to a Cardinals game, when they go to Barnes for world-class treatment in a cancer setting, uh, they want to feel safe when they get there. And so it doesn't matter what part of Missouri you live in. Crime travels. It can go to those small communities, and those small communities come to large communities for services, and they want to feel safe when they get there. I, I think it all starts with that as the foundation of, of what you're going to build off. Because if you don't feel safe in your community, everything else kind of falls apart because you don't right. have that firm foundation to build off of. Hey, I and, wanted and to as, go ahead. As you know, I'm an economic development guy. I love selling Missouri. I love selling our business opportunities. And by the way, not not opportunities that blame businesses for crime. <laughs> but you could you can't you can't even start the economic development conversation until you have that foundation down of a safe community, and that has to be step one. It's very true. Hey, tomorrow is uh, election day in the state of Missouri. Uh, anything in particular that you're looking at tomorrow in terms of uh, turnout or, or things like that? What are your expectations for elections tomorrow? Obviously, sure. it has nothing to do with your race right now, but we've got school boards and we've got municipalities and all of those elections are happening. Right. Unfortunately, those spring April elections don't produce usually great turnouts, but they're important people that are up for elections. School boards, uh, you ask what's on Missourians' mind. We talked about crime, economic development. Um, you know, opportunities for uh, Missourians, parents and kids alike uh, to be able to get a good education, to have options and choices as they move forward with their children in public education is very important. So paying attention to the right school board candidates, I think, is a critical measure. I know it's a critical measure for tomorrow. So those listening and those districts in Missouri that have those elections up, you know, they're, they'll be electing leadership, city councils and other things as well. So don't get me wrong. But those school, paying attention to who goes in those school boards and making sure that he or she um, understands the importance of options and education for our kids and how the district that they're running for d does is uh, very important. Well, I appreciate you spending some time with us today. I'm glad that uh, everything's going well on the campaign front. I, every time I talk to you, you seem to be somewhere different. Where, where did I find you today? Today is farm day. You oh. know, normally uh, the... Uh, Senate doesn't go into session until four on Monday, so I try to work Monday morning, but the Senate is actually off today. They don't go until tomorrow. So today is the day. This is my 39th year in the cow-calf business. My wife, Claudia, and I are first-generation farmers, and so uh, fixing fence and getting things, fields ready for fertilizer and uh, the hay season, that's all stuff you get caught up on when you have a day at the farm. You know, I, I spent a lot of time as a kid in northwest Arkansas hauling hay. And I don't think there's any more better character building job that you can have in the summer than hauling hay. But they do it a little differently now, don't they? Well, they do. My kids might disagree with that a little bit because <laughs> we didn't have all the nice hay collecting equipment that I have now as I've gotten older, no kids sitting around. But um, it is a great experience for any age person to get out there and experience what work is like on the farm. People think when they go to the grocery store, Mike, that that meat just got into the freezer and they and are in the cold case and they get to buy it and eat it. There's a lot of work that gets that meat to that freezer. And trust me, 
Uh, I can't tell you the number of people, especially from urban area, we've had to our farm, and they're amazed at how much you have to go into to raise a cow, to raise a calf, to get it to the point where you can send it to the right processing place. I mean, uh, there's a lot of work that goes between coming off the farm and getting to the grocery store, so it's good for people to know that. Well, we appreciate you taking some time away from all your duties there and uh, talking with us today, and look forward to talking with you again soon. All right, buddy. Have a great day. Thanks for having me on. By all means. That is Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe is catching us up. You know, the campaigns are off in full swing now. You're going to see things start happening in Jefferson City and also in Springfield, Illinois, if you live over a Metro East side, like a lot of this show does. Um, there are things that are going to start moving because once you get past spring break, people start seeing the end of the session is within sight now. And they start realizing, okay, We've, we've had our discussions, we've filed all our bills, but now it's time to actually get some work done. And at that point, when you come back from spring break, is when you are typically are going to see the legislature really kick into high gear. So I'm curious as to what we're going to see get done. I really hope that Representative Chris Bill gets passed through the Senate and it gets there because uh, St. Louis isn't going to turn this around on its own. It's pretty pretty clear They've had opportunity after opportunity, and you just had a, a situation where uh, the Board of Aldermen overrode the mayor's veto on the uh, firefighters' pension fund. And at that point, she got mad and decided that we're going to do a hiring freeze on everything. So now the city of St. Louis isn't going to hire on a whole bunch of other positions, especially first responders. She put a freezing, a hire freeze on that. So... Gee, what could possibly go wrong at that point? Because if you already have problems providing the services, one of the great ways that you can make it get better is make sure that you don't hire any new people. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. But that's kind of been the theme of liberal mindsets today that we've had on the show. This makes sense to them somehow. I don't understand it, but that's that's kind of where we are. Hey, it's April Fool's Day. I hope you're having a great April start, and you're getting off to the right foot. Uh, we would love to know your opinion on what do you think things are going to be? Where do you think the economy is going to go? Do you think it's going to improve, worsen, or stay the same this year? Our YouTube live chat poll is waiting for your opinion. Please weigh in and let us know. Mike Elam sitting in for Annie Fry today on the Annie Fry Show. St. Louis is home for Conservative Talk, 97.1 FM Talk. This is the Annie Fry Show. Follow Annie on Twitter at Annie Fry Show. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Baseball is back, basketball is heating up, and the NFL Draft is right around the corner. Listen to the latest on the teams you love with the free Odyssey app. The biggest sports radio stations in the country providing unrivaled local coverage of their teams all in one place. Exclusive interviews with players, coaches, and team executives streaming live and always available on demand. Stay in the know with your favorite teams with Odyssey. A-U-D-A-C-Y. Download the free Odyssey app today. Have you scheduled your maintenance for your air conditioner for the summer to assure you and your loved ones that you will have cooling this year? If you have not, definitely do it. This is a great time to start while you're listening to me right now instead of calling me when it's 100 
degrees outside and your air conditioner is not working or it goes down and you say, you know, I forgot to call Bart. It's really affordable. I mean, considering what, uh, as far as groceries, it's about, a, it's about the cost of a loaf of bread, $89. So uh, <laughs> call me. Spart Inman, one easy number in Missouri and Illinois, and the only number, 314-293-2600. Again, 314-293-2600 or bartinman.com. That's Bart with a B, Inman with an I, dot com. Serving my country required sacrifice, sacrifice that changed my life forever. I remember the day I came home Because of my injuries, this house wasn't right for me anymore. I remember the narrow doorways, the small bathrooms, the shelves out of reach when in my wheelchair. Every day was full of obstacles. I felt trapped. I remember a better day, the day my family received a specially adapted custom home from Homes for Our Troops. That day changed everything. Now we have a safe and accessible home to enjoy the freedom I fought for. This place, our home, is exactly what we needed to rebuild our lives. Homes for Our Troops builds and donates specially adapted custom homes nationwide for severely injured post 9-11 veterans and enables them to rebuild their lives. Join our mission at HFOTUSA.org. Gain peace of mind that your flooring and carpet installation will be done right the first time when you hire the experts at Michael's Flooring Outlet. They give all their clients attentive personal service, even bring toys for the kids of the household. It's a family-owned and operated business for 25-plus years. They make sure you make the right choice for your home. So if you have carpets or hard floors, you're going to be happy for years to come. Three convenient locations in St. Charles County, 116 Main Street, in Old Town St. Peter's at Mid-Rivers and Highway 70, in West County on Olive, and the store in Darden Prairie. Michael's Flooring Outlet, IGotFloor.com. You're listening to The Annie Fry Show live from the Air Comfort Service Heating, Cooling, and Insulation Studio. Air Comfort Service is proud to support Greater St. Louis Honor Flight. Sign your veteran up for the Honor Flight today at gslhonorflight.org. And for heating services, visit aircomfortservice.com. When the radio is away, 97.1 can still play. If you have the Odyssey app, of course. Listen to any of your favorite hosts on 97.1 through your phone. On St. Louis's home for conservative talk. This is the Annie Fry Show. Follow Annie on Twitter at Annie Fry Show. It's the Annie Fry Show on the April Fool's Day edition. My name is Mike Elam, sitting in for Annie today. Hope you're having a great day. The actually weather outside is pretty good today. It's supposed to change later, but I'm not going down that road. We're just going to talk about it's nice right now. And any time that you start a Monday with good weather, I'll take it. Now, did you guys have a good Easter? Did we talk about that earlier to start the show? We have not. So We've not discussed Easter at all. So um, I don't know about you guys, if you had a big gathering, but everybody came mm-hmm. to my house. Typically, we host for my wife's family is here. My family is not. My family's down in Arkansas, so I didn't get a chance to see them. But um, my kids came over. My brother-in-law and his family and his kids came over. So we had... Three under the age of four who were running around the house. There is nothing that really charges a family gathering like little kids. And my my niece's son, so I guess that makes him my, my great nephew. Would that be how that works? I, I, I get a little fuzzy on that kind of stuff. But um, he, he did not like it when we were doing races in the backyard. He loved it when he was part of the races. But when we said, no, 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 buddy, you sit over the side. We're going to we're gonna have different people race now. He just had a meltdown. And my girlfriend's, uh, my girlfriend, my daughter's boyfriend was there. If my girlfriend was there, that would be problematic, uh, especially when my wife found out. Yeah, that especially would, on Easter. That, that would be really bad. Yeah. Um, but my daughter's boyfriend was there, and he videotaped it. And he was like, wow. He just let out this scream that, that was huge. Now, let me, let me get this right. 
your family was doing races in your in backyard, the backyard with the little guy who's how old? Four. Four. Yeah. And then you said, no, no, to the four-year-old, we want to race each other? Yeah. You just like running in a circle. So it, it, no, it was <laughs> running across the backyard. So it was okay. it was really funny at first. So my uh uh Alex and his son were racing each other, right? So the the dad of the four year old okay. was racing him uh just to have some fun. So then my uh my other niece's fiance got involved in the racing. So then it became a three person race between the dad, the fiance, and the son who were all racing. Well, then my daughter's boyfriend, who's a St. Louis cop and in pretty good shape, uh, they start edging him on to get him into the race. So he gets into the race. Well, then they start trying to get the girls to race. And the girls are all like, no, 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 we're not running. So they came up with, well, what if we did mimosa races? Yes, so this is where they have to run with mimosas in their hand, which allows them the opportunity to not actually run, but walk fast and make sure you don't spill the mimosas, right? So I think that was just an excuse for them to actually say that they did something while they could drink mimosas, but that's just me going out on a limb. Then they got the little kids involved by doing um, spoon races with eggs in them and to have them go back and forth. In other words, it was a great day just to get out and enjoy everybody hanging out. We had wonderful food, but my grandson was over. So that's like it, everything pales in comparison to being able to spend time with a grandkid. If you have a grandchild, you'll understand what I'm saying. If you don't, it's the best time of your life when you actually have grandkids and they're little. You don't really care about spending time with your kids, but <laughs> spending time with the grandkids, that's a different story. So where you were probably still sleep deprived trying to figure out what day was what, weren't you? Yeah, but we woke up early because we do have two nine year olds and a six year old who still love hunting. So I, it, it, this was kind of cool. So I picked up random candy throughout Japan. Most okay. of it I was eating, but some I did <laughs> save. And I had now. When you say you picked it up, you mean you bought it? You didn't just find it laying along the ground? Oh no, I stole everything. Okay, good. Um, Americans. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, What's that about the raised nail, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't gonna be there for long enough, so. Um, I yeah, I picked up a bunch of Japanese candy and cookies and just random stuff, and we made a Japanese Easter basket. Oh, nice. So we we knew that. I mean, I don't know if everybody does this, but. Every Easter, it's like two days beforehand, we're like, oh, man, we haven't bought anything. <laughs> and, and so we go and we just, like, buy Cadbury eggs and whatever we can find, and we fill up an Easter basket. Okay. Well, that was happening, but we were out of the country. <laughs> so we were picking up all this random stuff, which we thought we're killing two birds with one stone here. Not only are we buying Easter, but we're also making it a very memorable one by having all this weird stuff. Now, the kids weren't with you in Japan, were they? No, they weren't. Okay. No, so it was just me and my wife. And so they got to see that. And I, I said this last week, I was going to do it, and I did it. Hey. Brad, I filled some of the eggs with yen. <laughs> so instead of getting American money, they got money that they can't spend, <laughs> but they thought it was cool. So it was like, ha ha, tricked you. You can't even spend that money. I used to think Canadian money and Mexico money was really cool when yeah. I could get that from time to time. Yeah, and you keep it forever for yeah. absolutely no reason. Yeah. You know, just Here's to have a farthing. It. Yeah. What, what are you going to do with a Ooh, farthing? Neat. There yeah. you go. Oh, this, this penny has a hole in it. Exactly. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, oh, look, some... Queen Elizabeth is on this. Yeah, exactly. So we did that in the morning. And then the afternoon, uh, we just went to my parents and did a similar egg hunt. Except no Japanese candy. Oh. Well, yeah. it's not the same without that. Not quite. How about you? Did you do any origami? No. Uh, no. No? No, I don't have any kids or uh, anybody like that to make Easter, Easter baskets for, to hunt Easter eggs with, or anything like that. Uh, what we ended up doing was we went to church in the morning. We did our, our Sunday service for Easter. And then after that, my parents came back to my place, and we had a uh, flank steak that we smoked. And Nice. Uh, yeah, had dinner and watched some college basketball and some, I think, no, I think they left before the Cardinals game started, but we watched some college basketball, and that was our Easter. Great college basketball games, though. Uh, yeah. Unless uh, you had Duke going yeah, further, yeah. then maybe not for you. Uh, yeah, I mean, my bracket is still on life support, so it's not the end of the world. Oh, my bracket was done day one. <clears throat> I, I picked a couple of folks that just, no, see you, bye. Can I tell you, 
uh, what was really fun about yesterday, aside from the fact that I didn't mention that we went to church. Thank you, Brad. Um, we did yeah. watch basketball. Okay. My son had six, and he's nine. He just randomly picked these things. He had six of the eight of the Elite Eight. No way. And uh, I, I didn't get to see the pool because we were out of the country, but that's what my dad said. He had Alabama, UConn, Purdue. This is his final four. And Duke. Wow. <laughs> if Duke would have won, he, he would have had the full slate. final four. Wow. But he didn't have North Carolina State, nor did anybody. So. Yeah. Not I, even I think, North Carolina State had them no, going. Yeah, so think, there you go. But he's got a pretty good chance, I think, in this thing. So. I like his odds. I mean, what he's we can't gonna... figure out to do, honestly, we really don't know what to do about this. Not just, oh, this is good fodder for talk. We don't know what to do if he wins nine hundred dollars. <laughs> you don't Wait. tell him he won nine hundred. No, he knows. He already knows. So he and he doesn't exp- he doesn't know really what to do either. I mean, this is going to be like if you're nine years old, and you win almost a thousand dollars. Yeah, it's like winning the Powerball. You could get anything your mind has ever which, dreamed of. Which pool is he in? That's at nine hundred dollars. It's one with my dad okay. and his okay. his work buddies and stuff. So it's yeah, it's not here because ours aren't that big. No, no, this is a I'm big like, Wait pool. A minute. That Wait if a he minute. wins He's this like, thing, how did I miss that pool? Yeah, it's a lot of money. I mean, it's a five dollar entry. Yeah. So if he wins this thing, which he very well could, because he's got UConn over Purdue winning the whole thing, and he had six out of eight and three out of four. So he's got to be in the lead of this thing. Wow. So we don't, we really are like, ah, uh, if you win, we don't know. Cause we pay, uh, not, my dad paid his entrance fee just okay. because he's being nice. He did it for all the grandkids. So you're going to split the pot with so grandpa? So I'm like, well, wouldn't you? Yeah. You, grandpa's got to get most of this. Yeah. Right. And grandpa's like, no, no, I'll just take back my five bucks. Like, what is he going nice. to do with this? I have, I really don't know what to do. Like, are we going to force him to. Does he have a gaming a machine or something, or do we not do that? Does he have a gaming addiction? Is that what you asked? No, a gaming machine. <laughs> he will. The addiction comes later. He's about to have it. Well, I mean, he spends a lot of time at truck stops. So maybe. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know what he's it's doing like, there. Look at all the lights, and I press the buttons, and then money falls out. There yeah, and he wins, you know. Uh, some lady named Ruby is his good buddy. <laughs> you go like sugar and fire. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> so I I don't know what he does at night. I can tell you that, but I he can tell you out of the house that nine hundred dollars to him it might be gone like that. This is true. So he's gonna sit down at the what are they called VLTs? Those uh, video gaming machines, and <laughs> yeah. he's gonna blow it all through. Yeah, Man. it's like, hey, let's go to the truck stop and do some gaming. What do you say, Grandpa? <laughs> let's make this happen. Yeah. Hey, you want to lose your uh, gaming license? Here's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> all, all you have to do is have just, this nine-year-old show up and with start a doing it, hanging off of his lips, and at the gaming <laughs> yeah. machine, hitting the button. Yeah, and me broadcasting it. <laughs> yeah, to all law enforcement. Uh, that dude what is, could possibly go wrong here? <laughs> that dude is totally twenty-one. Yeah. By the way, Ryan's address is no. Yeah. This is. This is how this is going to end in a very bad story. Yeah. Uh, Well, hey, we are going to wrap up the big show here in just a little bit. But before we do, uh, get your YouTube live chat poll results in. Let us know what you think. We've talked about what's going to happen with this $900 if the economy goes to hell in a handbasket. His $900 is going to turn into $450 uh, the way Joe Biden's economy is going right now. It's going to cost him that much to eat at McDonald's before long. Yeah. He's actually winning $1,800. i am just adjusting for inflation. <laughs> <laughs> Once we get done, I mean, he is in a 50% tax rate at nine. So that's, that's pretty much yeah. how it's going to go. Uh, what do you believe will happen in regards to the economy this year? A, will it improve? B, will it worsen? C, will it stay the same? Get your results in. We will talk about the results of that on the other side of this. It's the Annie Fry Show. My name is Mike Elam sitting in for Annie today. On St. Louis's home for conservative talk, 971 FM Talk. I worked it out. Yeah, I worked it out. The Annie Fry Show is streaming online. Watch us live on YouTube and subscribe. Mark Cox here. If you're nearing retirement or already retired, call my friends Thomas Helbig and Bob Kershaw with the Retirement Advisory Group. They'll show you how to link to the market without the risk. They're the official financial advisors of my show. Go online to retirementkey.com. This is a special alert to all Americans who own a vehicle with less than 200,000 miles with an auto warranty about to expire or with no warranty coverage at all. Due to a decline in the economy, CarShield is announcing a low-cost month-to-month vehicle protection plan that is now available to the public to 
save any driver out-of-pocket expenses on future auto repairs. Call now to find out how you can pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. Yes, you heard that correctly. Pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. An open phone line has been established for all drivers to call for a free quick quote. Call 800-652-5241 now. Drivers who are covered will not have to pay for covered repairs again. This protection plan is at an all-time low. Additionally, drivers who activate this vehicle protection today will also receive free roadside assistance, free towing, and car rental options at no additional cost. Call us for your free quick quote today. 800-652-5241. That's 800-652-5241. What do you have to lose? Call 800-652-5241. Again, 800-652-5241. At Odyssey, we believe in casting a wide net to create a diverse and inclusive workforce as we value the power of community and encourage local organizations to help us in referring qualified applicants to our stations. If your community organization interested in receiving our vacancy information, simply email equaleemployment at odyssey.com. You'll be directly notified of our open positions. Again, that's Equal Employment at Odyssey.com. And for our listeners, we invite you to visit odysseyinc.com slash careers. There, you'll find an online listing of job openings at all Odyssey radio stations. Hey, it's Mark Reardon for the Doctors, Doctors of Ophthalmology Associates. I depend on them for eye care, and they have an announcement. They're pleased to welcome Dr. Samuel Barry to their practice. Dr. Barry is a cornea surgeon, and he has the latest knowledge and techniques for advanced eye care and treatment in the field. So what do we call Call them now, the doctors, doctors, doctors. No, just the best doctors to see for your best vision. In St. Louis, you can reach them at 314-966-5000. They've treated more than 250 doctors, more than any others in the practice. Now, if you need help with dry eye, LASIK surgery, maybe you have glaucoma, macular degeneration. I had an eye disease when I was just 25 years old, so my eyes are very important to me. You get the absolute best care with the doctors of Ophthalmology Associates. Doctors Greg Birdie, Ranjan Maholtra, Robert Brasati, Andy Royer, and now Dr. Samuel Berry. 314-966-5000 or visit youreyedoc.com. They have a great location just off Manchester Road, a half mile west of 270. Ophthalmology Associates. Today's Annie Fry YouTube live chat poll has to do with the economy. I'm looking forward to seeing the results, which we will give shortly. What do you believe will happen in regards to the economy this year? Will it improve? Will it worsen? Or will it stay the same? We'll give you our choices on this poll here in just a couple minutes. And, of course, we'll give you the results as to your choices in this poll and some comments here in just a minute. 244, this time check is sponsored by Jerry Kelly Heating and Air Conditioning. It's time for a $98 AC tune-up. Good afternoon, it's Mark Reardon. I hope you had a nice trans visibility day yesterday. And speaking of which, we may very well touch on that topic here in the monologue coming up after Fox News. Baby, I get a little bit jealous But how the hell can I help it when I'm thinking on you? This Maybe is the Annie Fry Show. I might get a little Find the podcast, on-demand audio, and more at 971talk.com slash Annie. My mama taught me how to share But I be selfish and I don't care Cause I want you I need you all for me It's the Annie Fry Show at 971 FM Talk What is that song? You know, I didn't put the music this in today This gotta be Michael Bublé It is every definitely time I Michael, hear Michael Bublé. Bublé I'm like, woo Really? You don't well, like I don't him? like him, uh-uh Really? I don't I, I, I acknowledge that he's a good singer I just don't like his voice So... My wife and her friend Amy, this was years ago when I was still at Smooth Jazz, and he was just coming out. This gives you an idea of how long ago it was. You were at Smooth Jazz. I was at Smooth Jazz. That checks out. (laughs) It does, doesn't it? So I was at Smooth Jazz uh, when 106.5 was Smooth Jazz back in the day. So Michael Buble was new. He was opening up for Olivia Newton-John, and uh, it was at the Fox Theater. And we got the opportunity to go backstage and meet him after he finished his set. And uh, thank you, David Myers, for making that happen from back in the day. So we went back, met him, and then uh, my wife and her friend Amy stood back there and talked to him for pretty much the entire Olivia Newton-John show. Oh, that's cool. So uh, Amy's husband, David, and I went back out. We watched Olivia Newton-John. And the two girls just sat there and talked with Michael Bublé. So they have been all Michael Bublé ever since then. They were pretty big Michael Bublé before that. They really liked him. 
But ever since then, it's been like, oh, he's the man. So sorry, he's he's not Ryan's guy. I mean, I'm sure if he talked to me backstage at a show for an hour, I'd be like, yeah, a little more respect. Yeah, he's a little better. Yeah, he's all right. <laughs> he was, he was really cool. Like he just sat on the, he sat down on this table and he's like, hey, how'd you guys like the show? So what do you do? He What's just wanted to on? sit down with you guys and just have a little jam sesh. That, he just sat you down and just chatted away. I've seen lots of videos of him, though, where he'll bring somebody up out of the audience to sing along with him. And when the person is really good, his reaction is so genuine. It, it's awesome. I this saw that good. with, like, the 16-year-old yeah. boy who came up he and sing, sang. He sings yeah. it. He's like, what? <laughs> Not, you guys are acting as if I led this by saying, that guy's kind of a butthole. <laughs> I did not say hey, that. Hey, listen, you come from Michael Bublé. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you, you better come you better, hard. Yeah, if you're going to come Just at the saying, king, you best not miss. I, sh- I should have <laughs> opened with, hey, seems like a nice guy. Just not sure that I love the dude's voice. It's fair. It's okay. <laughs> like, Yo. No, he talked to me, though. Okay, but that's wait. fine. No, he was really nice. That's okay. Yeah. Still don't like his voice, but, you know. He hey. seems to be very is genuine that, when that, he speaks with fans. Great. Is that something you would say to his face? It's like, hey, I don't like your voice. But you no. seem like a nice guy. I wouldn't say that to his face. <laughs> he seems like a nice guy. I wouldn't do that to that guy. <laughs> now, if he was a butthole, then I would say it right to his face. You know, for being from Canada and all, you're not that bad of a guy. But, you know, still don't like your voice. Just saying. Tell me about your book. <laughs> hey, did I tell you I'm writing a book? <laughs> That's some pro radio stuff right yeah. there, Ryan. Let's let's talk Doing about radio segues. Stuff. <laughs> let's do you. some segues. Well, I know you've got a like you've done you've done some movies, documentaries, and you've been involved with some TV stuff, right? Yes. So you've you've done all that kind of stuff. Have you ever written a book? Yes. So how many books have you written? One. I, I thought you'd written more than that. No, I've written. Well, I'm always writing more. Okay. But I've only published one. So I've never been involved in this whole process. And Brad, have you written a book before? No. Well, I could see that you could. I mean, you're a smart guy. You've got really good thoughts. And I could see that you yeah. would write a book. Well, you take all that and you combine it with my utter despise of writing stuff down. Well, okay. So there is, <laughs> there is that. It doesn't so, work out. I, I don't know. Did you always want to be a writer? Like, did you always want to write a book? I always wanted to write in that I just always write. You okay. know, so I just I incessantly write. But you didn't plan on writing a book. It's just something that evolved over time. Well, and no, you I went, wanted to write a book. Now I do. I, it, here's the problem. When I started to realize, I got an agent for a while and all okay. the stuff and realized that there is a total of zero money in it. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> and then I realized, oh, okay, I actually do love writing enough that I'm still going to write a book uh, because – to make the kind of money that you need to make with books, right? you pretty much have to be at the level of somebody. It's very rare that a J.K. Rowling comes about. Right. And and those kind of deals, even 20 years ago, whenever those were signed, they don't exist anymore. Right. Because publishing has changed that much. Yeah. Grisham, Patterson, those guys yeah. don't really yeah, have those, much Yeah, those anymore. guys, quote unquote, signed a publishing deal. Right. That basically does not happen now because there's too much availability to publish. And the publishing companies don't need, uh, oh, my gosh, I just found this writer. They basically need publicity. So if you're Kill Mead, you've already got it set because you've got a national radio show. Right. So it's the publicity that basically sells your book. It's not a publishing company anymore. And I think that's why a lot of these, like the people on TV, they write books just to help them speak. Like they've uh-huh. got it. I'm going to use this book as a way to get in and, and speak. And then, you know, while I speak, it gives me the opportunity to sell the book, yeah. right? So I had never really wanted to be an author. I didn't didn't really see me as that way. I'm not really a writer. Uh, and by not really, I mean not at all. But um, I have a friend of mine who is a uh, fireman at Central County Fire and Rescue. And Jason Minersagan is the guy who had this idea. And he put together this book, and it's a book uh, called Notes from Dad Anthology. And it's 35 guys who all get together, and we each write a chapter. And then uh, we worked with a publisher to put this together. And we have zero expectations of making any money. We know this is a money loser for us. Like, yeah. we all had to pay to be in the book and, and to put this together. But it's um, he calls it encouraging dads and a fatherless generation with stories and lessons from today's dads. And 
basically my whole thing was just writing it to sort of do advice to my kids, even though my boys are grown now, but stuff I wish I would have said to them before. Uh, the older you get, the wiser you get, right? The more experiences you've had, especially the more bad experiences you have, because those are the ones you learn the most from. So it's a chance for us to put this book together, and it comes out on uh, May 16th. I'm very excited about it. It's my first time to actually say, hey, look, I'm an author. So a sort of. couple weeks before Father's Day, is that about right? That's the idea. I see. Yeah. So when do we get our signed copies? Uh, <laughs> March 17th or, or May 17th. May 17th. Um, whenever I buy them and, and, and get them. <laughs> yeah, that's how so it works. It's, it's very funny. So you write a book and then you have to buy your own copies oh. of the book. Is, you is, get them real cheap, but you do still have to buy them. You do still have to buy them. Now, the first, I think the first week or two, we're going to have an electronic sale. So you can buy the book for like two bucks, uh, an electronic version through Amazon. You can okay. buy it that way. So I'm looking forward to it. But I, I say all that to say I have a newfound respect for authors mm -hmm. and what they go through and everything that goes into putting a book out. I, I never realized. Oh, it's crazy. Oh, yeah, I, and the, God love you for going through that process. The number of hoops you got to jump through to, to get it published, let yeah. alone write the book. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> writing a novel is not a small task. No. I've said before, it is way easier. I found this out as a professional writer now. <laughs> It is way As a professional writer. It I is way that. easier to read a book than it is to write one. Really? Yeah, you can do it way faster and everything. Because I thought sitting down, I'll just write this book just like I read a book. Nope. 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 You got to sit there and think about it a lot more because you're creating the yeah, story. You got to come up with a story, <laughs> yeah. and, and then people want to edit it after the fact. And then you you got to have a good editor, uh, otherwise you're your own editor, and it shows. <laughs> it, it really does. You can tell people who self published and and, had, and you didn't can't just. Throw some ideas in chat GTP and let it come out. Like, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, and you can tell when that happens, too. You, it's like, wow, that sounds absolutely nothing like you. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder why. But, so Yeah, so, okay, so what's it called again? Uh, it's called Notes from Dad Notes Anthology. Notes from Dad Anthology. Yep. Anthology. Notes from Dad. So, Mine is the life of human. <laughs> life of human. Yes. Very cool. Very, very similar topics. So, yours... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to it, though. We've got a whole Facebook for, group of, of just these guys. For together. those of you who don't know, Ryan's book is about a robot takeover of the world. Uh huh. Which is pretty much the same thing same of what thing I wrote. Same thing as notes about. from dad. Uh huh. So it's, it's very If you similar. wrote about how to avoid that as a dad, I, then it is pretty much the same thing. It is pretty much the same. Amazingly enough, I didn't. Uh, but <laughs> but that's pretty much it. Hey, we've only got two minutes in this, and let's get to our, our poll of the day, uh, which is what do you believe will happen with the economy this year? Improve, worsen, or stay the same? Um, where did you come down on this one? I actually think it's going to stay the same. Uh, in election year, everybody just kind of battens down the hatches. Uh, they try to sort of make everything appear better, but usually things stay pretty calm. Right. In an election year, simply because the powers that be try to make sure that it does. Brad, what did well, you come I think with? it's going to worsen. I don't think it's going to like dramatically worsen. But as we're getting into the summer, the, the prices of fuel are creeping up and that's your supply. And that's going to cause more inflation because prices are going to go up because drivers are still going to need to make money and they're going to have that added cost. So I think it's going to get a little worse. I agree. I think it's going to worsen as well. And uh, the only reason I say that is a lot of the money that is in the economy right now is going to get pushed out. Mm -hmm. And as that goes through, I, I think the cushion's going to be there. So where did the listeners come down? Ooh, I got to pull that up. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey. I'm actually doing it right Ryan's now. Ryan's doing okay. it. He's on it. I just oh, have man. to do my double check login. It's <laughs> taken forever. He's he's working on that. <laughs> hey, thanks thanks to everybody for hanging out today on the Eddie Fry Show. Uh, my name is Mike Elam. It's been fun sitting in today with the guys and being able to uh, spend three hours with you. Did we actually find out what the poll yep. results are? Hey, here we go. It worsen one at 59%. Most people think it's going to worsen. Then 33% say it's going to stay the same. And the minority of people, 8%, say it's going to approve or improve. Yeah, I don't see much way that it's going to improve. I agree yeah, with I you. Don't it's either going to stay the same or do that. Hey, Mark Reardon is coming up on the other side of this. Hope you have a great April Fool's Day and look forward to talking to you soon. Annie will be back here tomorrow on the Annie Fry Show on 97.1 FM Talk. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. 
Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than they're worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor, and Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash free. Ramp.com slash free. R-A-M-P dot com slash free. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and